might be some of the biggest news in esports history this week. MLG, CBS Interactive, we have all the news coming to you tonight. Losers Bracket Round 110, we will be joined by the Senior Vice President of Major League Gaming. We have Adam Apicella with us tonight. I have been bouncy about this all day, just bouncing around at work, bouncing around at home. This is going to be a great episode, guys. We are stoked to be bringing this to you tonight. I am I'm thrilled. Are you guys ready? Tweet out that we're live. I have my current co-host, as always. Lord Jareth is with us. We have Kurt Key Hunt Carter as well. I'm not calling you clap this week, damn it. We already got banned from MLG once. That's not happening again. Kurt, how are you, buddy? Are you ready for tonight? I am, dude. I am. I've been ready for uh, the past, I guess, 48 hours or so. <laughs> so, yeah, should be should be good. There's not a whole hell of a lot of uh, news going on. Other news this week other than this news. Um, and a few things about IPL and stuff like that. So we'll cover all that. But uh, we're really going to be focusing most of the show on CBS and, uh, and CBS and MLG and Twitch. And, of course, in ESL, uh, we might be surprised as well. So, yeah, Indeed. doing pretty good. Jerry, what about yourself? Are you excited for tonight? Uh, I am. Um, I think we are in the cycle now where everything's going to change. And tonight we're going to finally get an insight to how things are going to change. And for those that are passionate in esports, uh, for the esports fans, I think uh, tonight's that one night where we're going to talk about the good. And I really mean that. There's no rants tonight. There's no – we're going to talk about the success because I don't think everybody realizes – how important this really is. I know to a lot of you, so what, CBS Interactive, Twitch TV, that's great. What does it mean? Well, tonight we're going to find out what it means. We're going to talk about exactly what it means for the players, what it means for the organizations and the people that are involved in esports, and most importantly, the doors that it opens up. Because uh, I think as you're going to find out tonight, this is just the beginning of a series of things that are coming out regarding uh, Major League Gaming, uh, regarding esports, and in many ways, for a lot of us, the game is going to change. And tonight I plan to, to hit those topics. So um, for those of you that want to know, we typically cover a lot of the console stuff, Gears, Call of Duty, Halo. Tonight, that's not what the story is. Tonight, the story is about the business, the opportunities, and the effect that this partnership will signal and what it means for the future. And I promise you all, I will pressure uh Adam to uh, leak a little bit of more information than usual. So uh, we'll see if I'm successful at that. With that being said, we also, uh, who else do we have on the show tonight, Jason? We're also going to talk some League of Legends, right? Yeah, we're also going to have VVV No Control, who actually helps run our League of Legends division. We'll talk, I guess, a little bit about our team that we just picked up too, huh? Uh, They actually did pretty well in the tournament that they were just in. So that'll be coming up on the show. We'll get both of them in, so maybe we can have No Control ask Adam a little bit about League of Legends, see if we have uh, any MOBA news for Anaheim and beyond. Hmm. Um, Before I forget... This is kind of cool. Kurt, we actually are doing something in your honor this week. I don't know if you guys have seen, but all day on Twitter we've been promoting this. We're going to be giving away a CSGO beta key. It's all because of you, Kurt, I promise. Uh, But all you have to do if you want to win a CSGO beta key, this will be randomly selected from all the tweets that we get tonight. All you have to do is tweet a link to this show with at Losers Bracket somewhere in the tweet. Make sure it has at Losers Bracket and a link to this show, and you will be entered to win a CSGO beta key. That will be decided right after we go off the air. So to enter, one more time, at Losers Bracket somewhere in the tweet and a link to the show. Let people know that you're watching. Let people know what we're talking about, and you could win. Simple as that. Sound good to you, Kurt? <laughs> yeah, sounds good to me. And I'm, I, not, I think I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, not even going to comment. Before, we'll tell people before the show's over. Oh, We'll do better. the work. I'll buy by. We'll tell you before the show's over. And, um, you know, it's random. Last time for the Guild Wars giveaway, it was a VV applicant, and there were some bitter, angry people. Look, if it's <laughs> random, it's random. Stop complaining. Trust me, the applicant was already – their applicant already liked us. That's why he applied. I didn't gain shit by giving an applicant already applied to VVV any kind of kudos, right? So if it ends up being a VV member or not or an applicant or someone's brother, cousin, or uncle, sorry, that's just how it is. Trust me. Just like Guild Wars, I really don't care who gets the one and only, the only official Kurt Keyhunt Check 6 Counter-Strike Go honorary beta key. 
There's Woo! Yeah. Distance. Yeah. All right. I like yeah. That. All right. So. While we try to bring in Adam, let's actually bring in No Control first, uh, talk to him a little bit so everybody can learn who he is, and then as soon as we do that, we'll bring Adam on in to the call as well. Sound good to you guys? You know, it's a good thing that Adam didn't say something like, I'm not going to I'm not gonna come on the show until you get at least you know 200 people live who want to hear the news of what this means. So <laughs> no pressure, no pressure. No pressure. Um, but yeah, all you, you got it, you got it. All right, let's bring No Control in here. We have VVV No Control with us, who is one of the people that helps run our League of Legends division. No Control, welcome to Losers Bracket. How are you doing? Time, man. doing pretty thank good, you, thank man. you. Dude, this is an exciting night. This is an exciting night. It's a good night for you to be coming on the show for the first time. So It is. For the people that don't know who you are, because you are relatively new in your staff position at least... Let the people that are watching know who is no control and, and why they shouldn't confuse you with in control. <laughs> I get that a lot. But um, I'm currently the uh, League of Legends manager for the professional team. Uh, we just picked up the team last week, and uh, I'm really confident in uh, what they're going to do for the community and for the League of Legends, uh, League of Legends division. Very cool. Very cool. Can, please, like I was just saying before, pressure Adam tonight on, on MOBAs. Well, <laughs> Uh, we'll do, we'll do. Yeah, because you know I would never do something like that. But a lot of people don't know much about what you do. Let me start out by saying, for those who don't know, uh, first name Michael or Mike. Uh, Mike is a Marine, so thank you for your service. Uh, tell everybody, uh, what do you do in the Marine Corps? How long have you been in the Marines? Where are you stationed? Uh, how long are you going to be there? That kind of stuff. Uh, I've been in the Marine Corps for two and a half years. I am a, a an AT, Navionics Technician. I work on the uh, EA-6B Prowler. Um, I still have another two and a half years left on my contract. Uh, I'm in Seattle right now. I'm going to be leaving here in about about two weeks, and I'll be heading to Cherry Point, North Carolina, and um, probably going to get deployed early next year. So uh, kind of looking forward to that. Awesome. awesome. Well, thanks again for your service. Jason, back to you. All right. I think that Adam is just about ready to come on the show. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to pull him on in. Kurt, Jerry, sorry, your pictures are going away. We're getting in a man that's a little bit more important tonight. Adam Apicella, how are you doing tonight, my friend? What's up, guys? Good to have you, Clap. Um, wow. Where do we even begin on a night like this? First of all, I, I think we should say First of all, you're fired because you can call them clap again, and we've been telling you to get, get them to Adam. We want Adam. All right. Adam, we'll Adam, just Adam, Adam. Adam. Just Adam. Right. People this is a new professional. Clap. He's working with CBS Interactive now. There's no room for claps, and, and that. it's got to be a little more professional. He's got to up his game a little bit. Pardon the pun. I think there's plenty of room for claps with an, the announcement of the CBS partnership. I think that that's pretty cool. damn awesome. Okay. Look, I think we've had enough of the puns. We got we did the Brazzers <laughs> fighting in community puns uh, the other week. No more puns on this fucking show, dude. None. All right. All right. Out of the way. Congratulations on the new partnership, Adam. We're all very excited. Thank you. Appreciate it. We're excited, right. too. Let's get right to it, Adam. I want to start right out. All these esports fans, people are going to be watching this show. They're going to get up tomorrow morning. They're going to download it. They're going to have it on their way to work. What does this mean for us? What changes? What's the big, what's the, why are we excited? What if I don't understand this? Help me out. Well, I mean, something that I understand uh, personally from, you know, I come from the perspective of that I run these, I plan and operate and execute these amazing parties, these events, these awesome tournaments. And uh, I feel like not enough people know about them. I feel like we have, you know, diehard fans and, you know, we have this very niche audience, but I feel like we don't reach as many people as we have. And uh, MLG's never spent, a dollar on traditional advertising and uh you know i think a lot more people are going to know about this party that i planned and uh they're gonna think it's cool and they're gonna to want to come out there's gonna be a lot more eyeballs on what we're doing and i think that's great for everybody um so that's i mean that's one one side of it and the other thing is uh our our content our products are going to be in places we couldn't do by ourselves i mean they're going to be embedded on sites that we wouldn't be able to do by ourselves um on our own and uh we're our advertising um CPMs that we see uh, while we stream is uh, it's going to be infinitely better. So 
uh, everyone in this space is going to make more money uh, streaming on Twitch, and uh, you know, it's it's good for everybody. I mean, there's it reverberates across multiple levels of business. So, um, what do you think uh, from your experience going into this? Obviously, this whenever you do a structured deal with three individual identities, it gets a little more complicated than when it's a partnership between uh, two people. And I know you can't talk about everything, but um, Twitch TV, CBS Interactive, MLG, was this an easy partnership to form? Was it something that sort of wrote itself? Did you guys, was there some struggle? Uh, what was your, you know, what was your experience, honestly? It wasn't a struggle at all. Um, kind of like, uh, kind of been talking for uh, over a year now on how we could work together because it made so much sense. We just had to figure out how to do it, what uh, the structure of the deal looked like. And, uh, you know, I, I mean, I think when you get, you know, one of the best global distribution partners out there um, and get them behind, you know, the best league and the the best streaming platform, I mean, there's, you know, it makes a lot of sense when you get everybody in the same room and you decide to hold hands and work together, so... Well, everyone is familiar with Twitch TV. I think uh, a lot of people may not even know how familiar they are though, with CBS Interactive, uh, CBS, uh, and obviously uh, the things we see at GameSpot are very, uh, you know, familiar. I think it's one of the two big ones. Everybody knows them. So um, let's, uh, before I monopolize this, though, Kurt, I know you have been very diligent. We've talked about you taking a lot of notes. You've got a lot of great questions, and I'm not going to steal your thunder, Kurt. I want to hand it over to you and uh, let you start to bring in some of that. Yeah, well, i got a few questions here at the start. Um, first off, once again, congratulations. I know you guys have been working hard on it. Um, and, and I think it's definitely been hinted at, hinted at for quite some time, either either big announcement, big announcement, or you know, a, a, shot, a few shots at IPL every once in a while. Always, uh, always fun to hear. <laughs> but there are a few things I'm curious about. Um, one of which I want to get out, kind of a funny one, right out of the way. And I'm, I'm kind of curious how the relationship with GameSpot, uh, which I know it's of course it's, it's a little bit more than that. It is CBS Interactive, but the relationship with GameSpot and how that sort of came to play before beforehand. So. What I mean is, is you know, we know we had GameSpot, which was exclusive coverage for Winter Arena. Um, was that sort of a part of this whole thing? Was that a part of this deal with CBS Interactive? Or was it more just what made sense because Slasher was working for him at the time or doing independent with uh, contract stuff with him at the time or what? I mean, you should know. I mean, these deals like this don't happen. <laughs> Don't happen in the span of the winter arena to now. I mean, this has been going on, like I said, for quite some time. And uh, you know, if anything, um, I love I I I, I love Slasher, and uh, I'm glad he's working for him. But I mean, definitely, uh, I I say Slasher's experience at MLG, and you know us, uh, you know, we've definitely helped each other out there. I think uh, him getting that gig is 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 uh, kind of maybe. A partial byproduct of this of this collaboration. I don't want to take say it completely, but Slasher is definitely a talented journalist on a, in his own regard and deserves the job um, on merits of his uh, expertise. But uh, th- this deal wasn't something that just just happened because they covered the Winter Arena. This has been going on for a while, which, like I said, we've been trying to figure out how to make it work. Gotcha. Um, another quick question about content. Uh, a few a few months ago, you guys did lay off a lot of your content crew, both website, both. Uh, all the you know almost all the TV shows other than I think Weekly Warfare. Um, does that have did that have in some relation to do with this deal as well? Uh, because of the content that hopefully maybe Gamespot will be producing in the future or something like that, or was it strictly just you guys trying to, as you said at the time, get a little bit more lean and mean? It had absolutely nothing to do with uh, CBSI. Um, it's more of that when you look back at the, where this business started in its infancy and why. Um, people that, you know, just believed in us and gave us, you know, um, venture capital. It's because we ran the best tournaments. Uh, we put on these great events and, uh, the community got behind it. And that's what we went back to. We went back to running the focusing on events and the content that came out of it would be event related, whether it's competition video, um, or anything just created around just the content. I mean, the, the competition content and, uh, 
I feel like we lost our way there for a little bit. And I feel like what we did earlier this year was just an effort to kind of start kind of a fresh, start fresh and start new and uh, focus again on what our core foundation is. Gotcha. Um, last question about sort of content and stuff like that. Uh, you guys got a lot of flack during the winter arena for having uh, n- no space and not allowing uh, a bunch of the press for a lot of the independent sites against like ESFI and uh, things like that uh, into uh, the winter arena. With the CBSI deal, is that going to complicate? Oh, looks like the call actually just dropped for a second. We're trying to get that back real quick for you. Give me just one second as it looks like Skype is having difficulty. The CBS died. And Did the call drop? here we go. Yeah, no, I'm sure. dropped for a second. Skype's been doing that tonight for me. Yeah, it's I can t- hear you. Hold on now. one second. If you could okay. repeat the question. Jason, we good? We are good. If you could repeat the question, Kurt. We are not good. Wow. <sighs> Give me just one second. Skype apparently hates us at the moment. <sighs> and... Yeah, my camera's really grainy, too. I did stay to the game earlier, and it was fun. I don't know if it's on his end or mine. And yeah, I can double again. check to make sure if we're there's back. an... All right, we're back. <sighs> Let's hope that that's the last... We're going to restart the Skype call. Give me one second. I'm going to restart this because this is painful. Publicate anything. Everything will be the same, and we're, we're totally open to letting anyone cover us and working with we them. We need to restart the call, guys. We need to restart this Perfect. because it's Perfect. dropped three times. Now. All right, Jerry, back to you, buddy. Jerry, oh, can you hear all me? All right. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, and why don't we take a Give me one second. We're going to restart the call, and I will be right back with, hopefully, no more problems. We will be right back, guys. Sorry about that, guys. We are back. We just restarted the call on Skype. Fingers crossed. We'll have no more technical difficulties tonight. But we are back with Adam. And let us All right, everybody. Thanks for your patience. Can I hop in? Go for it, Jerry. All right, let's get to some tough questions. Uh, I want to get to the harder stuff. Adam, obviously, you just mentioned that this is going to trickle in a lot of uh, extra uh, opportunity, possibly extra capital. Um, let's talk. Let's start looking at the Anaheim event. I mean, everybody right now is aware of what you're doing for the arena. Um, let's talk about our game selection we have right now: StarCraft, Mortal Kombat. Uh, Soul Calibur, if I'm correct, right? Those are all yep. the ones you have confirmed. Um, any word on any other games? We confirmed King of Fighters. Yeah, King of Please. Fighters also. Thank you. So yep. all those three are going to be on it. Anything else? We're announcing another a new title next week. Is this a title that's ever been on before? Huh. <laughs> Ask me tough questions, Lord <laughs> Jareth. You- <laughs> <laughs> we might have we, we might have seen this title prior on the MLG. Uh, Circuit history. All Does right. it begin with an L and end with an uh, Eagle of Legends? <laughs> <laughs> the fact he looked, I feel like it's Hollywood Squares, Adam looking up at the box above him. <laughs> so, Adam? Uh, I think it's a title that everyone wants to see, and uh, we've, been work- we've been working very hard since 2011 with this publisher to make sure that the deal that was in place and the relationship we have with working with each other is going to be one that is mutually beneficial for years to come, and we're very excited to announce it next week. Awesome. So we can expect League of Legends next week. I'm sure Riot Games is really Yes! Excited. So uh, you I'm can put- expect, I'll say this. You can expect whatever title we announce that we may or may not have run in the past to be presented in a way that's never been presented before in Anaheim uh, with higher production values, um, something that, you know, you're giving I mean, it away, Adam. It's league now. You're giving it away. I'm not. I'm not giving it away. I'm betting on it. Let me, let me ask you, here's here's on, how it goes, on. Adam. Here's why it's League of Legends. One, you know and I know that the current way League of Legends is presented, there's no way to make money off that stream. No matter what anybody at IPL tells me, what 
if fucking television operated on two hour streams of fucking people yapping and no commercials, not going to work. So you're saying, if I can read in between the lines, that you found a way with Riot in a partnership to have League of Legends shown such that it's more monetarily beneficial for everyone. You don't have to agree to that, but that's where I'm putting my money right now. Kurt, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, here, here's sort of my question in, in relation to that. If if what we're speaking of, and, and I'm just throwing this out there, and you don't have to once again confirm or, or uh, deny, but if what we're speaking of is something in the relationship of, of Dominion with League of Legends, how is that going to affect the community, and have you guys kind of gauged that? We're mm-hmm. running Greg Hastings Paintball, and it's... <laughs> Which has been on the first circuit as a, an LA in 2004 as a one-off uh, with Greg Hastings Paintball uh, team, and uh, it's going to be in a. Uh... What about what yeah, about what Barbie, what about Barbie get, Dreamhouse Deathmatch? That, I'm going to get. On, man. I'm going to get the kind of questions that go. What about Halo? And I want to avoid that tonight. I want to stick to uh, announcements that are upcoming that you're certain about. So, uh, new, new title next week. It's another announcement in the. Many announcements we still have coming. Uh, we definitely didn't uh, fire every <laughs> every. Uh, we, we definitely didn't fire all of our shots that we had before Anaheim. I'll tell you that it's just the beginning. Like uh, like you said earlier, Jerry, I think before we started this, is that Katie Goldberg, who is uh, Sunday and I's respect or uh, leash to what we're allowed to say publicly, if she says it's just the beginning, it's it's really just the beginning. So there's a lot more to come. Yeah, when Katie yes, starts doing the whole hype thing on Twitter, you know you got problems there. <laughs> Just corroborating you know? what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the experience for those who are not fortunate enough to go to Anaheim. Um, you're talking about production value. Um, this nearly first half of the year, um, one could argue that esports fans have seen you and two of your competitors. And I want to talk a little bit later about Nazl's involvement in this deal because I feel it was really downplayed. But before we get to that, there's been this competition, different people um, doing different things. And I want to ask you something. Do, do you think, um, do you feel that as you move forward, MLG, and I don't want a stock answer of yes, we are. I, get, I, you know, I know that, but um, you have all learned a little bit from each other. Do you see Anaheim, as far as production quality, as far as what I get as a spectator, to be another incremental step forward, or is it going to be something really big? And can you talk about any, anything that, that would sort of have somebody go, wow, that one item does sound really big? That's a, that's a multi-phase question, Jerry. Which, which one do you want me to answer here? Let's... I want to first know, I first want to know, Anaheim, production value for those at home, Going to be better than what I've seen in all other events this year. Yes. Second question: the degree by which it's going to be better. There are things people like about what IPL does. There are things people like about what Nazl does. There are many people like what MLG does. You mentioned something about we're going to do a new title that hasn't been shown the way we're going to show it. You're going to announce that next week. What about the titles I am familiar with? My questions would be: how much can you improve StarCraft? How much can you improve? the three fighting games you've announced. What can you tell us about, oh, it's going to be better? Well, I'll doing? say this. I'll say this. Um, you know, I think IPL did a great show um, every Easter weekend. And uh, I have, you know, I, I talk to Jedi Rob all the time. I think he's one of the nicest guys in the space. And, uh, you know, we kind of lament uh, back and forth about, you know, the just the BS that, that goes on. And, uh, you know, I, 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 them having a bad show last or uh, over Easter weekend would have been terrible for us. So let's not get, let's not ha, let's not misrepresent that. We wouldn't have been cheering if their event was a disaster because it would have made this whole space tougher for us to sell. So I'm glad their event was great. I some of the games they put on were amazing. Um, what how Anaheim's what we're talking about for Anaheim is that you know if if IPL space is 35,000 square feet. And Columbus was 100,000 square feet. We're going to have 200,000 square feet of space in Anaheim, oh, and every inch is going to be filled. Um, we are going to have a publisher there that's going to have their biggest activation they've ever done outside of an internal event. Um, and it's going to, uh, you know, I'll say this, Jerry, I'll give you a leak right now. We will be at E3 with an official booth with CBSI the week of MLG Anaheim. 
and a lot of the press and a lot of the stuff that's going on there is going to carry right over to Anaheim. So there's some huge shit going on for Anaheim. Like I said, double the space. Every inch is going to be filled. There's going to be some stuff that no one has their hands on yet that's going to be there. And uh, there's going to be more asses and seats than it's ever been in an esports event. Okay, so one thing you said, uh, Adam, and you know how I am, uh, always trying to piece together what you said. Um, I'm thinking about the games that are coming out. I'm thinking about what's going on in the space. Um, You said something nobody has their hands on. So I know people who have betas of various games. Are you honestly saying this is something nobody has their hands on or just isn't released yet? On June 8th or the 10th, this game... (laughs) <laughs> whatever's going to be in Anaheim will not hit, will not be available to anybody that would want to have their hands on it unless they come to the Part room the swarm? in Anaheim. Part of the swarm, perhaps? Perhaps, perhaps? It, it could be Mario Party Jason. 12. Jason, oh. Jason, <laughs> Jason, Jason's just pointing at the fucking big white elephant in the room and laughing at it. Come on, Jason. So you we gotta, have, you gotta we dance have, around uh, it more than that, buddy. We have a hundred... <laughs> Sometimes you gotta tease, Jason. You just can't go in there. <laughs> just put it right in. Come so, on. So we have like what, like forty some stations for StarCraft tournament uh, at at uh, or MLG events. It's like all like counting spares and counting the main stages um, and the feature station. It's like a hundred computers. Um, we are, I, I believe, going to have two hundred computers there for some game that's not out yet on the floor, <laughs> and a quarter of the space that we're talking about in the two hundred thousand. So if okay, you so- if you like cool shit that a lot of people that like MLG like, um, and you want to get your hands on something. Before it comes out, uh, come to Anaheim. It's okay, be so here's a question. Ready? Uh, and this is really good. So I, as an audience member, as a spectator, will I be able to play this game and try it out? You'll be able to play it all weekend on 200 oh, stations. My. So uh, so if I want to – wow, i got so many questions that are now just shitty. Like I was going to trick you and ask one of those questions and start to narrow it down. But I'll, I'll either A, let that go, or B, I'll ask it later when it's less obvious, one of the two. Um, <laughs> Let's okay. I know, right? Um, let's talk a little bit, Kurt. I know now might be a good time, Kurt. Let's talk about the rumors <laughs> that we hear, um, and I think some rumors. The, the, most, uh, of the, most of the fucking rumors he's already addressed. I know, right? <laughs> well, sort of hinting at it, but go ahead. Uh, what do you got? I'll also, wait one more. I'll, get, I'll, I'll set. To, I'll set up. I'll tee it up for so you can ask you good questions, so the people in chat can you know can speculate even further. Fun. I also say that some of the biggest stars in the world and all of these titles will be in the room that they've never been in a room before in North America. So you just ruin, you're just ruining my that? fucking question there, Adam. You just, How you're just, about you're, that? You're banned from Check 6 tournaments, okay? How do you like that? <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think there, Kurt? Are we talking Brood War? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. It's got to be. Yeah. We're all betting on Brood War? Oh, God, Pro League's cool. starting soon, dude. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, I, you know, I know, so now, so now, so now, so now hold on. Let's assume, let's assume right now that the following is true, and that is that we're going to have Heart of the Swarm available to play in Anaheim with, I don't know, let's say all the top players in both StarCraft Two and Brood War. In I, think one all, place. I think all might be a little much, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. Bitch, Most. You know, I've, I've heard rumors about like Flash and Jadong and things like that. I've read that online. That could be a possibility. The big or, ones, I would think. Yeah, yeah. If it's if it's not the big ones, it's not it's not important enough to talk about. Right. My opinion. Mm-hmm. So I mean, because you know, four G G switched over months ago and it's not like a huge, huge deal anymore. So Flash and J Dong, however, big fucking deal. I agree. Yeah. All right. So um that would be uh, to probably make a lot of StarCraft fans happy. Not to mention uh okay. I can see the Jerry, extra you don't know where you don't know where to fuck to go from here, do you? Well, I'm thinking about the space. Where I want to go next is the space. There's a lot of space that you just mentioned, and you've still got a lot of leftover space, if I'm doing my math right. So uh, I'm saying, okay, are we going to see a lot more vendors there as well than we did at Columbus? Is that another additional feature? Or are we going to have about the same number of vendors? Uh, are we going to see Sony still do free PlayStations? What is the rest of that space going to going to consist of? Well, how close or similar is it going to be to what we already saw at Columbus? We're going to see double the seats for StarCraft at least. Wow. Um, 
we are going to see a replication of all three of the main stage screens over the floor. Because if you're that far away from the main stage and we have that many fans, you have to be able to watch all the screens of the guys that got there at 8 a.m. and got the, the, you know, the seats right behind the media and VIP seats got to see. So we need to have audio pumped and, and all three screens uh, replicated. So StarCraft's going to have a gigantic seating presence. That's a, obviously a lot of space. This new game we're adding is going to have a gigantic spectator experience as well. Um, fighting games were actually changing a bit. Um, uh, from hearing community feedback, um, actually, we're talking about taking away the bike rack, having it be more of like a mosh pit feel you near know, the stage, um, have this, the competitors be closer to the stage. Um, so we're trying to listen to that community as much as possible. Um, so I wouldn't say that floor print is going, that footprint is going to be bigger, but it's going to be different. Um, and yes, the, all the par- partners that were there in Columbus are going to be there again, and we'll have more. Um, we have more partners that are want to get on board with us, uh, big partners um, that will be activating live and will be supporting us all year that are coming on starting in Anaheim. Oh, wow. All right, Mike, did you have a question? Yeah, so is uh, League of Legends going to be invite or open? <laughs> Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, the thing is, I think that's a very interesting question. And the reason I think that's, that's an interesting question is, number one, he doesn't, you know, we don't know whether he's going to answer it, you know, you know, bluntly or not. But I'll answer you. You want an answer? Or you want to you ramble on, Kurt? <laughs> You're so banned again, Kurt. Oh, God. On, Adam. Yeah, I do want an answer. I want to know. Whatever game that we pick up that we're announcing next week will have an open qualification component. Whether online or whatever, it will. there will be a X amount of teams, and there will definitely be a way that, you know, there, there might be an element that, you know, you have to click fast enough to purchase your pass, but there will definitely be a way to qualify in. It will not be invite only. Awesome. Wow. Okay. Hold that on. could make I got big news more. for those people who may have recently picked up one of those teams. <laughs> um. <laughs> I got one more that's in regards to uh, other games that might be coming out in the next, you know, month or so before. Absolutely, Jason. Before you do, uh, at this point, Kurt and uh, Michael, if you guys could start in the chat, I want to start getting questions from the people in chat, and then just go ahead and type them to me. I will screen them. Screen them. So if I don't want to ask, they can hate me because I've been getting a lot of love this week, so I'm due for some hate. So just let me know what they are, and then we'll get a mask. Sorry, Jason. Go right ahead. No, it's totally cool. Um, there might be some other potential PC games that you know certain publishers that might be at Anaheim could be bringing out within you know the next month or so. Uh, since we're going to have so many open PCs at Anaheim, is there any chance that we might see any other games from this developer that might be there? Any chance? Maybe. I never said it was one title. Oh, there's the answer we were looking for. So there is a possibility we could see more games from the developer. The publisher that wants to work with us in Anaheim is very interested in making it a very amazing experience for their very devoted fans. So, All right, so hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You said publisher. You didn't say developer. You meant publisher. Yeah. I always meant publisher. Okay, well, that, that points more and more to a blizzard because it's certainly not going to be EA. Right, we started to look at the pu- publisher list start to win- dwindle down when we think about publishers in this space. Who makes the Mario Party franchise? <laughs> yeah, that, you don't even know the name of your partner that we were going to bring up. <laughs> so, so there, you know, there is a chance of something like Diablo or, you know, could happen for those people that are asking in chat. If we are working with Blizzard, if we are working with Blizzard, that may be a possibility, but I don't think anybody said that, Jason. Hey, Although what know. would be cool is that what would really make for something interesting, and no offense to Blizzard, who's a fantastic partner, but wouldn't it be great if like Riot had a secret IP or something like that, or some something exciting like that? I don't want to like take away from you know whatever uh, awesomeness is already there, but uh, we can maybe have some fun speculation at least. I agree. Um, but Jason, I'm sorry if you had more. No, please go ahead. Continue on, Jerry. Uh, Adam, another thing I want to cover, too, is, um, you know, we were looking carefully at subtle changes. I noticed in the uh, qualifiers you have going right now for the arena, um, the continuation rule, uh, which I think is needed, has to be removed. Is that a permanent victory, or is that something that you know John is going to want to bring back for the championship, or is that not yet been decided? 
Um, so you're talking specifically about this weekend, right? I am. I am talking about this weekend in particular. And then will that go beyond this weekend is the question. So there's like a core tournament team here of like, you know, across um, – different spectrums of like company business, whether it, you know, people that have come in as like referees or um, community members that we've hired, they've, you know, since interspersed to like maybe editorial or now they work on our membership product or they work somewhere else. And then you have like John Nelson and you have Casey or strictly league. But when it comes to respected opinions of people that, you know, like, you know, obviously super intelligent people that understand what we do, but now we're just doing different business for MLG. There comes like this kind of council, I guess you could say, where we, we, where we debate, um, pretty heatedly um, rules um, here. And um, we've had, I would say, in the last week and a half, over 10 hours of, and I, I don't wish it, it's like 10, like three hour uh, blocks where we're just in a meeting going through, you know, statistics, um, you know, playing devil's advocate, you know, shooting holes in anything we're talking about. And one of the things that came up was the reverberations that happened when you, it, th- there's a different there's a beast that you have when you have four pulls right and then you take extended series and you carry it over to the bracket all the pool players in those respective pools are interspersed in the random parts of the bracket and there's a, a the lower chance those players are going to meet up again later right because they're they drop into different parts of the bracket um, and you do an eight man pool where everyone plays each other it's guaranteed that everyone's gonna have match history so that's a baseline it also creates some wonky things where, like, say we're in an eight-person pool, right? Uh, us on this call and some other people from chat. We, we had this eight-man pool. And say Jason goes seven and one, right? He's the number one guy in the pool. I go, you know, whatever, three and four. and But one of my wins happens to be against Jason in the pool. Like, I beat him in a series. I'm his only loss. I happen to make the pool um, uh, over, like, two of the guys that get eliminated, and I match up against Jason. And Jason match up against Jason in our grand finals. How do you explain to somebody that I now coming from the loser bracket have an advantage starting with Jason who cleaved through everyone else in the grand finals? These are questions that we we've literally gone back and forth. And I mean, there's de- there's definitely points in either side. And uh, I don't want to say it's a victory for anybody that doesn't like extended series. Um, I don't think that's fair. But I will say that we are taking a closer look at it and. Uh, uh, Maybe some modifications will happen in the future, but I'm really, really happy. With, I'm really proud of our team that we, because uh, we we all argued this fiercely. I can't even um, articulate <laughs> the conversations that happened, but um, where we ha- ended up with the the structure for this event, I'm really I'm really happy with what happened, and uh, really proud of the team that you know put all the hours in to make it happen. Awesome. The next thing I want to talk to you about is I don't know. It was a while back, but uh. Uh, ben, uh, known on Twitter as NMLG Ben, said, hey, sports journalist, how would you feel about being able to post news interviews on God Frag and use that as your base? Um, I guess you do have a IP sitting out there that you're not doing much with. Uh, Jerry, can I, not, Jerry, can I head you off here, though? Frag question. Come on. Go ahead. I, had, I don't have much opinion on this. I'd rather just move on. This isn't something that even affects my universe. Gotcha. Not in not in your not in your thing. Well, I'm just saying. I wanted to know. Someone call me. <laughs> I know, right? Well, you can understand why I'm curious, right? Because I mean, rarely do you you know that that might be something interesting. Going back to the event itself, though, coming up at Anaheim, um, what has been? Uh, and this is you know, honestly, you're talking. Obviously, this would be then the largest MLG event in history, right? This will be the largest event in MLG history. Okay. And uh, very seriously, I mean, what I'm asking, what are you worried about? What are the challenges? What are you – and I don't want the big checklist of Jerry, anything go wrong. But what are some of those pressure points you have upcoming? Um, <laughs> you, want another, uh, you want another ambiguous leak? Um, and one of our titles are going to be running two tournaments at the same time within that same title. So, I mean, that's definitely something that we've never done before. Um, we're oh, going to have – that makes my fucking head hurt. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of stuff to do in Anaheim, and uh, it, 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 it's hard. It's it, I'll say it like this. Um, Can I just throw up a picture on stream and give my guess for this? Sure, go ahead. What are you guessing? This is something that I had uh, actually received. This is Jason. 
pointing at the elephant again. Well, I mean, I just, I got this picture from Rob Z. God about a week ago, and, you know, things seem to add up, but when you, when you look at this picture, the StarCraft Global Finals, you know, and there was a, a tweet that, uh, that Sundance put out a little while ago where the locations that he had tweeted seemed to match up a little bit with some of the things we've seen from the StarCraft Global Finals, and it says tournament organizers will be involved, I don't know. To me, it seems kind of, yet again, like pointing at a big sign up on the wall. But I don't know. I, I'd love to hear the people's thoughts that are watching. Jerry, Kurt, would you agree with me? Well, I mean, obviously, I think, you you know, that's a part of it there. And Adam, I, you know, taking it beyond that, um, I guess, since I don't have a clear picture, and I don't know if everybody else does, um, what is Nazel's role in the deal? Because uh, I noticed that Twitch TV announcement had mentioned that they're a part of this. And now that Jason brings this up, I could see where, who knows, maybe they're part of running some of these events because uh, you need the extra people. So what can you tell us about Nazel's involvement in the deal with CBS Interactive and uh, Twitch TV? Um, I'll say that we're, it's largely independent. Um, there's not like something that's immersive between the two. Um, that being said, I'll say again, reiterate what I've said on, uh, said on Twitter or whatever else, that we have an open, very open and friendly and collaborative dialogue with Nazel, and we're open working with them. Um, I think one of the best moves they made was hiring Bitter in Rotterdam. I respect the fuck out of Ben. I think he does an amazing job. I don't know Rotterdam personally, so I mean, not to say that I don't think he does a great job, but I think those guys are making the right moves, and uh, I hope they do well, and, and if they need our support in anything, if there's anything we can do to help them out, um, I'll definitely help them out. I mean, no two ways about it. Um, and that, that's public, and it's not bullshit. If, if, if there's something we can do, loan them equipment, send staff out, uh, help drive people to their event, we'll do it. No problem. All right. Let's take a step away now from Anaheim and CBS deals, and let's talk about what's up and coming. We talked about it a little bit earlier. Um, you know, Kurt, you wanted – uh, open qualifiers. We have two arenas. May not be perfect for you, Kurt, but talk to me, Adam, a little bit about uh, what's going on for these arenas. Getting something better. Give us, give us the details. I mean, it's right around the corner. So talk to us. So, hold on one second. Is that a message from Katie going? This is what you're not allowed to say. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little too late. She's like, lawyers are calling. Careful. <laughs> yeah. It's a very serious look. It is a serious look. It is, man. It is. This is important. Now everybody he, gets an ounce of actually, smirk. He's actually closing his Counter Global Offensive Bader right now. That's what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> so uh, this weekend, uh, we're going to have seven streams going. Some people might think that's overkill, but let me explain why we don't think it's overkill. Um, we're going to have eight of the best players flown in, obviously. And they've qualified through um, their placement at Columbus. Um, and in parallel to that is the extensive qualification um, process that we have in place to have players um, you know, go through the online uh, system and uh, come to Arena 2. Um, but for Arena 1, we're going to have uh, two main streams. Every match played within this tournament structure will be broadcast. And so we'll have Tasteless, Artosis, DJ Wheat, Grubby, JP, Rob Simpson, and we'll have BC uh, observing on the mainstream. And also, we're going to have three analysts, race specific. We'll have QXD, we'll have Sheth, and we'll have Axlov. And if you take, if you, one of, one of the big things we hear is that you guys always tout you have quad view and you have all these streams, but I don't have enough eyeballs to be able to watch all of this stuff. Um, there's no way I could really pay attention to all these streams. So, on the with what we're doing is that the, there will be two main streams, but every point of view from the players will be a direct feed. So you really get a story told. You have your mainstream commentated by some of the best guys in the business, the best guys in the business, uh, and the point of views will be you know there to see the, the the full scope of the story as they're telling it. And then after the game's over, you'll have a, a pro within that specific race that's being matched up. You know, saying why he did this, why he didn't do that, why the story concluded how it did, and uh, I feel like it's that we're going to put on the best presentation for what can be a very complicated game to explain uh, based on our broadcast. Hmm. 
So the best story told to date in StarCraft is what we should expect to see this weekend. I think that's fair. I mean, Adam, would you agree with that? W- repeat the question again. I'm sorry. Uh, just you said stating, in short, we're going to get... Yeah, in short, yeah, we're going to see... In short, we are going to see the best presentation, the best storytelling of StarCraft that has been done to date at the arena this weekend. And, and uh, I'll say I'll agree to that, and I'm not just to discount any of the other talented uh, personalities we've ever had on our, our circuit to say that, you know, you know they don't do as, as good a job in terms of telling an all-encompassing story with perspectives from different you know levels of competition outside of like grubby and you know artosis i mean are these guys that will have uh, analyzing are pro players on a pro level and you know tasteless and these guys know the game in and out but they th- at this point they're not competing in their in their stages in their career so we felt like it was really important to have players that didn't qualify come in and say you know this is why he did what he did from my specific you know player's perspective on that specific race and uh i feel like Having both player point of views and you know this collection of talent, um, the best talent saying why they did it is the is a really good broadcast aesthetic and a really good story to tell. For some of these people you mentioned, um, Adam, and I think others out there who want to be casters, are aspiring to be casters, um, might say, "Well, how did you pick those players?" Or um, I'm pretty well along in my my experiences. How do I can how can I get involved in that? How did you go about selecting the people that you wanted on board? Uh, well, you I mean you have to have performance metrics to, to back up that you know that you should that a fan, I'm a fan. I should want to listen to this guy because he he's done well, right? Um, and not only that, I mean they had to have English as a first language, so I mean that narrows down the StarCraft field right there. Um, and so I mean the guys that we have, I mean they're incredible and. It, it, and they have uh, competition metrics to back up why people should listen to them. And so, I mean, I, I guess what I would give advice to somebody that wants to do this in the future is go to tournaments, do well. And uh, if, if you if you're playing, stream and prove that you're articulate on camera, and uh, we'll definitely give you a look. Let me ask about. As a, the, hold on, as a, as a ahead, quick Kurt. question about, about those about the analysis uh, people, the, the three players. I think like this, nobody else is going to like this question, but me. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Are you going to allow the three players that is Sheth QXC and Axlav to represent their teams on the stream, and not have like the the general caster look? Like I understand why you guys do that for the casters, but the we players- are requ- we are requiring their competition jerseys. So whether it has competing brands on it or not, we don't care. I want the competition visual that a player is out of the game on the on the sidelines, so to speak. And so all the players that will be um, analyzing the games will be uh, in their jerseys. Awesome, awesome news. All right, Jerry, back to you, buddy. No problem. Um, obviously, uh, somebody asked this, and I thought it was clear, but those players will not be playing. They'll only be doing the analysis, correct? Correct. Um, was it hard, or why? what do you think influences somebody who is a competitor want to stop competing, not take part in it, and come do this? Well, I don't think we would ever encourage somebody to stop competing, Um the only way we would ask somebody is if they had not qualified. So, uh, like for Huck, for example, I'd love to have Huck do uh, protests in the future, but Huck's playing would never say, Huck, don't compete, come do this. We definitely want to celebrate the athlete um, first. So, it was definitely uh, looking at players that had not qualified. They were also top players in their respective race and asking them uh, to come do this. Let me ask you another quick question as, as far as qualifications, because I, I've been very open in saying that I love the open open qualifier system and things like that. Um, and I think you guys have done a lot better for this arena. Um, but I do want to ask a quick question about the first arena uh, coming up this weekend. It is only eight players. Are you guys? I understand. You know, that it's kind of some of the reasons you did that. You we spoke on that before about the time restraints between events, things like that. But is are you guys looking to possibly expand that for next season, for you know uh, the next arena? Um, as far as like not the arena coming up in the spring, but the arena after that. Are you guys looking to expand that field to actually allow two full open qualifiers rather than just the eight players that we just saw two weeks earlier at Columbus? No. Don't. Why? Because the turnaround from the previous championship event to the first 
arena not only um, hinders that qualification process, but I also feel like the memory, the performance has been recent enough that it justifies all eight of those players deserving to be there. So, I don't know. You, you got to admit though that first that first excuse you gave was kind of bullshit because the open qualifier that for when arena two only took for the invite qualifier only took three days to do. Kurt, let's let's be let's let's clear something up right now. I just got finished booking parting MKP and MC's flights today. How about that? Because there isn't just MLG out there, and we have to. We have, that's what something we have to understand that we don't exist in a vacuum. We're the only league out there, sure, but we have to be courteous to other people out there, and we have to be courteous to players' schedules. And that um, GSL has stuff going on. You know, IPL might have stuff going on. NASL might have stuff going on. We don't. Players don't. We are not the end all be all for players, and uh, hmm. we had to wait for the code S stuff to be and the code A stuff to be announced before players could commit to flights because they don't want to be banned from gone for two for two seasons. So um, there's a lot of logistics around it that um, hampers us from doing more robust qualifiers. And like I said, I think it's definitely justified having those eight players from Columbus there again in terms of it just happened on March 25th to 26th that it's it's going to be what four four twenty. No pun intended uh, <laughs> for Arena One, and uh, I think it's short enough turnaround that it's it, those players are still relevant in terms of the comp, the, the placement they earned. Okay, gotcha. I was going to hop in now, and um, let's talk a little bit about those who may be new. They haven't yet purchased their stream pass. We have a new system of pricing that is affecting the arena. And um, I want you to talk to us about how this changed from the previous pay-per-view model. And uh, for those out there who are hearing, look, we've got seven screens, pardon me, seven streams. We've got a lot of opportunity to digest content. Sounds to me like you're trying to deliver more content than before at a better price. Let's talk about that price point. So everybody who's not familiar, uh, I want to pay attention to MLG's arena, whether I'm a fighting game fan or I'm a StarCraft fan, what do I need to do? How is this going to work? So for this uh, season package for StarCraft specifically, it's $10 for this arena a la carte, $20 for the next one like it was last season, and $20 for the Pro Circuit um, for all the additional content that we don't that's paywalled and for the HD upgrade. Um, however, if you wanted to buy the season pass, it's 30 which is adding in another event in HD access for Anaheim. Um, Ten dollars more than it was for the winter re- winter arena pass alone. And if you're a gold member, it's a fifteen dollar upgrade. Um, gold membership right now is two fifty a month, and that's four guaranteed live events. It's the best value in esports, bar none. Um, so for an extra fifteen bucks, um, you get access to both of the pay per view arenas. Uh, I think it's a pretty damn good deal. Uh, that's my opinion. And uh, something we're doing this weekend that we're going to announce tomorrow is uh, we're also going to once. Sorry, Katie. On Friday or Saturday night, uh, do a 2v2 tournament with the players that are going to be there. So oh, wow. all the players will be fan voted into uh, to 2v2 teams, uh, avoiding uh, you know Protoss, Protoss, for example, on the same team. But uh, and uh, the fans will vote on who they want to see matched up, and they'll be put into single elimination bracket, and they'll play for a prize purse uh, 2v2. That's cool. That is really cool. Yeah, that would be. I, I, I absolutely love that content. Love that I content. do too. I, I and do. I, I I really love the uh, the Doctor Pepper stream when Lenox played mono battles with people with fans from the stream. That was amazing. That was that was hilarious. I know the Doctor Pepper stream was an incredibly um, you know a lot of people watching it, but I absolutely loved it. So Doctor Pepper right. stream is going to be incredible this time around. By the way. All right, you mentioned it. Let's hear it. Yeah, what's the what's <laughs> well, uh, I mean, he's already come out and said it. I mean, Clutch um, will be hosting it all weekend. Um, the race-specific analysts that we referred to earlier will, when they're not um, on a stream, they'll be in there uh, doing fun activity. Um, we have a lot of scheduled stuff. It won't be just kind of like a stream on a room this time again, uh, this time around. It'll be a lot of stuff going on. It's scheduled, um, hosted, and uh, with a lot of... Uh, star power that we have coming in from the broadcast talent to the players uh, participating in it. I have another quick question about the upcoming arena um, that I don't think anyone's asked yet. Uh, Team Liquid, can we expect to see uh, it on the stream viewer and on the calendar this time? It's already up there, man. We're already on the calendar and we have a countdown timer and we have a landing page. We're working with those guys really closely. 
Yeah, that was my point. I was I was getting around to the fact that now there's a landing page. So I find that incredibly interesting, Jerry. I'm not sure if you noted that or not, but well, now I mean, now there's uh, a you know a MLG Arena landing page for Team Liquid, and you know last arena they kind of took the high horse there. <laughs> well, <laughs> well <laughs> let me start out before I get to that because that that uh, you know. Um, I think Hotbit got his feelings hurt, and you know how much I care about upsetting other people. I always feel real sensitive about it, and I felt bad at least for – there must have been five, six good seconds there. I went, God, I don't think he likes me anymore. Not that he liked me anyway. I don't think he even knew me. But the point is um, I want to make a cheap plug here, but for those who don't know, we're also going to – we're very active supporting this stream, and uh, we're going to have our own code. So this is primarily for the VEB applicants and members and our fans. Major League Gaming has been kind enough to once again uh, allow us to partner with them. So when you go to uh, purchase your season pass, which I highly recommend, that's the really top value, the $30 pass. You can use the code VVV2012, and uh, that will tell the world that VV Gaming sent you. And um, it obviously, uh, for our members, our fans, all that, Again, uh, Major League Gaming is helping us by giving us this opportunity to work with them and help drive sales uh, to this event. We'll again be holding a, in our Mumble stream uh, kind of our virtual bar craft, just like we did last time. That was really fun and successful. Um, surprisingly, we didn't even um, – there were some people who stayed up in our Mumble for uh, the entire event, never left. Uh, that was really kind of cool because they ended up playing games afterwards. A few people pulled 24-hour uh, all-nighters because they got done with the event, and then they went and, went and played games, and they didn't want to go to bed. And then they just kept watching the stream the next day. So, again, the code here is VVV2012. The VVV is all lowercase, 2012. I'm sure some staff will be putting that in the stream chat. But I definitely want you guys to support that if you can because um, it's a yeah, – I don't know. I've been a fan of this from the beginning. Like I really – I mean this – I would not, I would never, I can't waste time. I don't know how to tell this to everybody, but people say to me, you know what, you should come watch so-and-so stream, you should come watch so-and-so stream. You know what, I wish I had the time, but watching players practice or sometimes watching players sort of screw off is not interesting to me. If I watch StarCraft, I really want to watch good matches, I want to watch VV players, that's what I want to watch. I want to watch that and when I, the, the weekend comes around where I know it's going to be nothing but the top players, that is amazing, bene, amazingly beneficial to me as a fan, to me as a guy who gets to, to get my players and our, our StarCraft community really looking at some of the things that the top players are doing. Right? That's really important. So I'm just a big fan of the stream overall. And Can Kurt, to your it? question. Go ahead, sure. Can I put an addendum in? For last time, with the last arena, uh, you were not able to use a referral code with uh, the discount code that was sent out. I do believe that has been fixed because the gold member discount now is down to $15 instead of the regular price, 30 I do believe there is still a box where you can use a referral code. Is, am I correct in that, Adam? I believe you're right, yep. Yeah, I think so. So if that is the case... Even if you are a gold member, getting it for half price for $15, you still can use a referral code. So please, if you are a gold member and you would like to, VV2012. Continue, Jerry. Sorry about that. No, and here's the thing to a lot of people who may not necessarily be StarCraft fans per se. Uh, I'm talking in particular to the fighting game community. You know, this includes you as well. Um, I was pretty, uh, I think, bring all three games back signals that uh, Major League Gaming wants to continue uh, in more than one way to look at fighting games. So this is something the fighting game community should certainly not um, not lose sight of. And I say this all the time. Um, the more that uh, those of you out there are involved in esports, uh, the more you have a say, the more you understand what's going on. I do find sometimes that some games where the games are no longer on the circuit – they're disconnected from esports, and they still they still believe that they're in the glory days of something. And I got to be honest with you, um, the size and and uh, traffic that I we get in VVV gaming uh, due to StarCraft and League of Legends, um, it's pretty phenomenal. And uh, it's really hard. I could I could probably add numerous things together. That's how popular it is. And uh, I really encourage you if you really have not gotten into StarCraft. 
not looking at fighting games. Should League of Legends come up at Anaheim, another good reason to buy the pass. Uh, you might want to figure out what everybody's looking at. Um, but yeah, so that's that's our shameless plug for VVV 2012. For our fans, for the people who appreciate what we do, this is one way to really help us out and use that code. And for many of you, I'm going to ask you as a favor, gold member or not, to please use that code. Because uh, we try, and our staff works hard, and uh, the the benefit we get from that goes directly back to our teams uh, and our hardworking staff. So, just to make that clear. Going back, though, to uh, the upcoming arena, Adam, and, you know, seven streams and what we just talked about, um, I guess you had some benchmarks in mind in the winter arena you met them. You're obviously expanding the spring arena. What would you say you're looking for differently this time? Uh, if I was an esports fan and I said, you know what? I'm really glad I'm being able to do this. Anything else I can do to help you besides more viewers on anything? Um, anything that you really going to need feedback or you want us to watch something closely because you're not sure it's really going to work or, you know, I know you guys collect a whole bunch of feedback, but just get an idea of what what you're thinking like you know hopefully we'll get these results uh i'll say the winter arena i mean everyone's <laughs> there's like so much speculation out there um and you know no matter what i say here when i think it's pr speak but uh the winter arena was uh an ex exponentially more successful than we thought it would be uh what we had forecasted um 150 percent better in terms of uh metrics and uh if we had just hit our minimum or our regular goal, we still would have had exactly what we're doing here uh, for this season. It's not like we, so, like I see a lot of gamesmanship out or like a lot of um, a lot of community discussion out there. It's like Sunday, it's really game. The community came out with this higher price point with all with all intents and purposes of lowering it down. That's not the, that's not that's not what happened at all. I mean, I mean, based on last quarter, we could have done exactly what we did and and, and not apologized. But that's not we don't that's not what we want to do. I don't think that. It's smart to to ask people to open their wallet that many times and ask that much money. I mean, I think uh, I think what we did in Winter Arena and people that watched it really really enjoyed it, and uh, we're making it even better for every arena this this quarter. And uh, I think that you're more than getting your money's worth for the the package that we have out there. And I, I will say again, gold memberships two fifty a month, and layering on you know the arenas and yeah, you know, what is it like? I think MLG is guaranteeing now, um, just for the last three quarters alone, uh, nine live events um, with players there live and uh, being flown in to compete. Not counting the online qual, the extensive online global qualifiers we're doing that we're broadcasting. Um, there's no, there's no event out there that does more live events and just general tournament quali- quality content um, for you know a membership product than we than we do and. I would just love people to kind of view the product for what it's worth with the dollars and not, you know, think there's some type of um, underlying motive behind anything, you know, we're doing. Well, I always felt that uh, the, we'll call it disconnect between you and Team Liquid over there uh, when they made that you got to pay us whatever undisclosed sum that they didn't discuss uh, to put it on their friggin' calendar. Uh, this seems to be fixed this time. Uh, like you said, um, do you feel that sometimes the community, your partners, uh, and I don't mean Team Liquid in particular, um, do you think there's something that could be done to like better help? Uh, you know, because like you said, you're always going to be called looking out for your best interest, right? You're 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 not in that position where your credibility is as clean as sort of a third party who can look at it and say, you know, Adam. Um, I have concern about this or, you know, uh, is the community going to end up having to pay for this? Um, do you ever wish your partners would, be, would defend you more or you're like, no, you know what? It really doesn't matter. Um, I'll say this. I think that, um, what we found with, um, have you looked at just the forum outcry for around, um, the winter arena, you would think that we sold five passes based on how many people were crushing us. Um, <laughs> 
and like I said earlier, it wasn't it wasn't bullshit. I mean, we we did really, really, really well. Oh, I, trust um, me, I don't think you have to justify that. Uh, I I was, uh, and I want to say this again because I think it pissed a lot of people off. And like I said, I haven't said in a while. Charge those motherfuckers. Every one of those whiny cry baby. I'm not, yeah. You're gonna get your ass there, and you're gonna watch. You're gonna watch just like everybody else. And I know that's not what you can say, uh, nor do you may necessarily feel that way, but. Uh, Certainly, you're absolutely right in that all the crying and the protest and the we're not going to watch and we're not. What do they do? They watched. Or at least a lot of them are not, you know, a lot of them aren't there, maybe, I guess. But but maybe they didn't. But I found maybe they didn't watch, you know, and and that's fine. But I found that our our customers might not be the ones that are posting the forums um, cussing us out um, or, you know, the ones you know tearing us down publicly. I mean, I feel like. uh, that might not be indicative of the people that are, you know, that appreciate the content we put out. So um, I, I'll say that the arena the spring announcement has been, you know, exponentially. Uh, uh, it's gone over much, much better than the winter announcement. And uh, so, I mean, and maybe if we're starting to win over some of the dissenters um, and we couple that with the people we know that are going to support us. Um, I, th- I think I have pretty high hopes about this weekend and the rest of the season. Um, so talking about the rest of the year beyond Anaheim and, um, actually one more question about Anaheim. I think that's worth at least looking at, um, will there be an Xbox 360 title there at all? Or is that a for sure? No, or you don't uncertain? Uh, it's uncertain. Okay. Um, with your, uh, with Anaheim, um, and all this new game and CBS. I'm, I'm a spectator. I'm coming into Anaheim. I'm at the event. Uh, we talked about some of the um, things I'm going to notice different. Double the number of chairs, much more partners. Um, whether I'm at home or I'm there, where does the CBS interactive part come in? Will I see that? Or is that something that's purely on the business advertising side? Um, or am I going to see... Um, am I going to see a big push? I think you mentioned earlier. And if and this is where I expect it's going to live. On uh, the actual GameSpot website, can you talk at all about what GameSpot is going to do to bring what you do and what Twitch TV does and everybody to more eyes? Do we have any idea what that's going to look like or how that's going to feel? Am I going to be going to GameSpot a lot more now, or is it people from GameSpot coming more into this space? What is what is that climate like? It's a little bit of both. I mean, I think it's a little bit of reciprocal exchange there. I mean, I think definitely uh, GameSpot is going to feature everything MLG does more heavily. And I think that uh, they're going to also be pushing more eyeballs back from their core audience back to what we do. And uh, like I said, I think there's going to be more um, distribution mechanisms for what we do um, more than we've ever had and uh, more places where our streams are embedded um, and just more just marketing outreach and just uh, word of, like, you know, internet word of mouth that, you know, we exist, um, based on this relationship. So I, I don't think you're going to see some, uh, gigantic, sh- uh, shift in, in the live event atmosphere in terms of CBS's involvement, but in terms of online and reach and push, uh, definitely you'll, you'll feel it. All right. Uh, yeah, I want to ask you, I wanna ask you yeah. just one quick question here about some of the CBS I stuff. Um, I just want to res- want a response from you from some of the critics. Um, me personally, I, I don't necessarily agree with this point of view, but I, I, a lot of people have brought up to me today, um, one of which is Keeker DC, uh, who I really respect. I think he's a really smart guy, and, and he's brought up some LG stuff before. But he brings up the fact that Sundance, for instance, said on Live on 3 a few, a few months ago, back when, when Arena was announced, uh, that it was incredibly hard, if not impossible, to sell ads uh, for MLG right now. Um, that it wasn't a incredibly lucrative community or l- lucrative uh, opportunity. That money wasn't flowing in. That's why PPV was needed. And now you announce this thing with CBSI and Twitch about you know this whole partnership with uh, ads and with distribution channels and stuff like that. What do you say to the people that are like, well, now are you going to take pay per view back? You know, now have you have you hit a point where your ad revenue is actually coming in uh, or will be coming in? Um. I don't want to say uh, pay-per-view is going anywhere. Um, CBS has an amazing sales team, and they're going to help us, um, you know, fill the, you know, you know, have, you know, more lucrative, you know, ad campaigns on our streams and on our, our properties. And 
uh, but I think you'll see sort so, like similar like UFC. There'll be a blend of everything we do that we that you see, whether it's pay per view or just uh, at supported bottle. Um, I don't I don't know where this is gonna gonna lead to, and uh, we're excited to find out. But um, uh, we just kind of have to kind of move forward and and uh, operate with these guys and 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 mutually decide like what's the best on, on how to distribute this. I mean, uh, we can get this in front of like a million eyeballs concurrent i mean maybe the ad supported model makes a lot more sense um but right now it's just it's uh it's not there yet and uh maybe it will be with cbs involved gotcha okay um l- one last quick question about just some of, some of the future stuff because i think we're going to get into that you're just right next um one of the things that i've talked about a lot with mlg has been uh the fact that iem has a way to sort of build up these uh, lesser-known players. You see people like Feast coming out of nowhere and doing well by qualifying and doing things like that. Uh, IPL did it as well, a little bit less unorthodox of a way, but they did it as well uh, by with Scarlet, who's now this you know hugely popular player right now. And was well, let me inside. cut you off there, though. You're acting like they did something specific to 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 hasten that. I mean, with Scarlet, she performed. I mean. The matches speak for themselves. I mean, there isn't anything they did special besides that they covered somebody that started winning in the open bracket and upsetting people. I mean, if that well, happened, number, at, if that happened in our event, we'd cover it just the same. That well, number one, they, I mean, I, I would say they did something special, but not necessarily it would have changed anything either. Um, I mean, they did have an open bracket stream. I mean, uh, IPL IPL did have a complete open bracket stream where they streamed open bracket matches rather than just the group play matches. Um, so I will say they, they did that correctly, and I would, I'd love to see MLG do something like that. Um, but that, be, that being said, you're right. And the qualification system, once again, is, is, is coming along great for, for MLG. But um, I was just curious as far as if there's anything possibly in the works to try to, to – just to try to do that, to try to hasten that process. Uh, cover the open record more extensively? Yes, yes, exactly. I mean, I think we can do a better job. I, I mean, we covered this, I think, last time. I, mean, I think that we can definitely do a better job. But I also think that it worked. I, I also think, though, and I'll say this again, that we have no su- subjectivity to who's in our pools. So, yes, we want to cover their aspirational side of our events as best as we can, but there's no like subjective invites or this guy has a lot of stream numbers, so we're putting him in the pool. It's like everyone that's there earned it, and they deserve to be covered. I got you. Does that make sense? I mean, it's like the people that are on the streams that we're doing, I mean, they, they've gone through some competition metric, whether online or uh, whatever else, that they they are seated in those pools and seated in a position of prominence because they earned it through competition, not because we ex- invited them because we felt they were the best uh, you know, person to push stream numbers. So, I mean, I, I'm very staunchly against any type of subjective um, favoritism um, on a stream, yeah, open bracket coverage is, is important, um, but I feel like what we're covering right now is just as important, that the people that earn to be on that stage are being covered. I got you. Will, will we expect, by chance at all, to see in the future be, the beta streams go back to what they were originally intended for, which was open bracket coverage? It's not what they were intended for. They were intended to cover get more matches out the door. But that's what they were announced as. They were announced as an open bracket coverage stream. I mean, they might, they might, they might not have been the end plan in your guys' head, but that was what it was announced. That was an open bracket stream, uh, the which was the beta beta stream one and two, or blue and red, or B and C, or so, something like that. I think Either we can definitely. I think we do. I think we can do a de- definitely a better job of covering matches people want to see. They're on the open floor. I agree with you. Okay, great. That's fair. I think, and um, want to change it away and. Uh, talk about something else um and forgive me for uh bringing back up legal legends and things like that but um no control just one thing right about <laughs> well i know i did but here's the thing that i really want to take a look at and i, and I really kind of mean this um there has been a lot of critique but for better or worse this year you've heard it from the fighting game community i hear when the halo game community talks about it uh the the timing of announcements And I think it's a fair critique to say sometimes for a lot of players who have choices, who don't get all of their expenses paid like some of the top players do, the timing of these announcements makes it difficult. 
And I understand that there's a business cycle. I'm an adult. And I understand that these deals take time. And I understand it is a worse disaster to release something and then it not happen, meaning for all of those who have to buy a plane ticket late, it's 50 times worse if they buy one and you don't live up to what you have to say. Knowing all of that, right, knowing all of that, um, to those who say, you know, you hint at these games sometimes and it's good and, you know, maybe they one of the reasons that listening to shows, we put the pieces together and I know in, internal to VV Gaming, I always say, you know, well, this is what I think that means. We're going to act on that. It's my fault if I'm wrong kind of do that. What can you talk about the timing of some of these announcements? And uh, would it be safe to be say, Adam, do you push them out as quickly as you can? Are you sensitive of this fact? We'll never announce anything until a contract's signed. I mean, just as much protection for us as it is for our fans. If they announced we had a title and it shit fell through, people booked their, their flights, who's at fault there? I mean, are we going to point the finger to publisher we want to work with in the future? No, we'll probably you know, have to take you know eat it and take it on the chin and and reimburses people. And I mean, I don't want to put fans through that. Um, so whether it's a, a venue contract or a, a title we're trying to operate, I mean, we don't ever announce anything um, until it's all buttoned up and uh, we announce it as quickly as we can. And uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate. Some of the stuff takes as long as it does, uh, but we're at a point now where we can't operate anything without support from the publisher because I think they own the IP, they control it. They have the end game vision for it. And uh, we need to work with them as closely as possible. Um, and if, and if we're not working with them out of the gate, then it doesn't make sense for us to run that title. Um, I keep I keep getting questions that I know you can't answer. Sorry, so I'm kind of like thinking, no, I can't really do that. Um, Adam, I, I think at this point, uh, one other question that I think tends to come up a lot is, uh, you know, the growth. Um, there are... Some people who feel, you know, MLG, it's great that you're making these partnerships. Um, if somebody asks you, outside of getting more eyeballs on it, there's something about sports itself that's very personal and, and things like that. And I think Kurt kind of hints at this a little bit when he talks about that open bracket where uh, stars can be made before they're, before they're up there. Um, when you envision the growth of major league gaming because you are in a pretty big spot right now and a lot of eyeballs can be on what you do and and no one is going to disagree with you uh that you should not have your first priority are the top players no one should disagree with you on that do you guys ever talk about what to do with that next tier of players right you've got your you've got your pros and then whether you want to call them your minor league teams whether you want to call them your uh, you know, the next generation of top players or the pool from which you'll draw um, where you get to start to identify top players and identify marketable and media savvy players a little bit sooner. When does that come into the business cycle? Is that something maybe for next year? Is it something that you actively think you can do now? Because I think that's that's something that uh, I know for a lot of, I mean, for us in VVV Gaming, of course, and for some organizations who do pull in, uh, that next generation of talent or try to identify early talent and work with them and make those those hard assessments about their dedication, their family support, how savvy they are with media, all those tough questions. Where do you see that fitting in? I mean, I've, I've said this before on um, one of the shows I've been on before, but I mean, I have a pretty extensive, um, you know, you know, not only personal history with you know organized athletics, but you know I'm also now in the stage of my life a, a avid fan across many sports, and uh, I've seen the successes and failures of other leagues that have tried to do what we're talking about. And I think I think one of the things right now that we're, we're struggling with, I'm not struggling with, it's like um, one of the things we're trying to uh, carefully balance is not oversaturating what we do. When we turn the lights on, when we turn our streams on, when we broadcast, um, we want it, people to, to know that you know we're doing it right. We're, uh, you should tune in because it's like something MLG is doing. Um, I think that the, eco, the ecosystem of the amateur needs to be embraced a little bit more, and I'm not sure if, if we're the ones that should be doing that or if we should be helping out somebody else that's doing it. But I definitely think like the NCAA of esports needs to happen um but i don't necessarily know if mlg turning turning their stuff on to kind of people kind of get fatigued from us doing so much um 
I don't know if uh, the equivalent of an NBA D league or uh, whatever else is the is the answer that we operate. But I definitely agree with you that there needs to be a better mechanism to get to building star power in a level before they get on the big stage. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. So you know, maybe and you know whether it's the fighting game community or another StarCraft league or some kind of B level tournament or whatever out there. Um, you know, a lot of people have the ability to throw something together and prove that it's successful and are thinking down the road. I mean, I'm sure that, uh, that you know, and the way I read what you're saying, which I think is really uh, probably appropriate, in order to be Major League Gaming, just like Major League Baseball, you are the Major Leagues. You can't cloud the the brand of Major League Baseball or what it means to be in the National Football League um, with the lower tier stuff. I mean, there's a reason I think it works really well at sports and there's a reason why the NC2A exists and why it's useful and even why it's popular. Um, although I think it would be a long time before we necessarily see it regionalized um, at the university level, the way the NC2A is established. Hey, hey, Jerry, I'll be right back. Yeah, go right ahead. All right. Well, Adam's going to go take care of that. Um, I want to bring no control back in and uh, I want you to ask me all those questions that you couldn't ask Adam because you brought up some interesting things in the stream, especially that you were speculating. Because I want to talk a little bit about League of Legends. Um, I want to get a feel for um, for those uh, League of Legends people that have been uh, messaging us. Uh, you said something about uh, a new hero. Can you talk to me about that? Uh, yes, there's a new hero coming out tomorrow. And uh, my speculation was that MLG was waiting... Or, <clears throat> excuse me... Uh, Riot and MLG were going to release their information at the same time, and I think Riot was trying to capitalize on uh, releasing the new hero to uh, MLG announcing that they're picking up League of Legends. Gotcha. So you wanted to find out if there was some some sense in that. I mean, I don't know. Right. Kurt, what do you think? I mean, I'm going to just come out on the record and say I am pretty much 90% certain that the game he's talking about has got to be League of Legends. It has to be. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, Riot that's, that's, CEO wouldn't fly to New York City. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's going to be that. With, he, with him not here, we, we could you know, quit be- beating around the bush. Although Jason wasn't good at that anyway. So. <laughs> hey, you know yeah. what? You know what? Somebody has to point out. But you know what we should do when he gets back? Oh, look at that. I can't even say what I'm about to say. He's sh- back already. Look at that. We Sorry, guys. Wait. Oh, it's all good. So I'm, uh, in, uh, I'm in the office late, and uh, they came to do the cleaning or whatever so i had to come out <laughs> someone just said that in the chat they said there must have been a janitor that walked in and it was so sad because <laughs> yeah, i wasn't sure which that's one why the lighting I... the lighting's up now yeah I, I saw the the beautiful new york city skyline behind you and then all of a sudden there's this big flash of light and this little reflection and oh it's gone so it's now out. everybody can start studying the reflection and say is that a copy of Heart of the Swarm back there? Is that what I see? <laughs> I can see you reflecting back on the window. What box is that over there? So can, nice. I, jump back, so that, can I jump back into the, the ecosystem? Yes. So All right. what I was so, going to say... No, no, hold on. Wait, wait. No, no. I want Adam to finish that about the ecosystem. Oh, yeah. Go so, ahead. Thank you. Um, so <laughs> last week, uh, last week I, JP and I were talking. I was like, you know... There's going to be a lot of crazy stuff going on in Anaheim. We're going to need some help. Um, I'm going to hire an assistant. You know, and it was... <laughs> uh, had a few beverages, and I, I tweeted out, I'm hiring an assistant. You know, email me and JP. So I, uh, I get, a few, you, know, you know, maybe 150 in that night, and I, I go to sleep, and <laughs> I wake up the next day, and uh, I, I, look at my, I roll over, I look at my phone, and I'm like, holy shit. I have 975 unread emails, and nice. uh, <laughs> so I, I, I received, uh, you know, in the course of 24 hours, I, I just a little bit, a tad over 1,100 emails. Um, and one of the things that I saw that I really respected, um, I, I always say this that people always I say, you know, they'll send us emails, they'll send us Sundance emails. How do I get involved? How do I get a job? How do I do this? And I say, you got to go out and do it. Go out and do it. Don't just say like I love it and I want to do it. Hire me. Uh, here's my resume. Like, go out and do it. Prove you can do it, and uh, we'll take a look at you. Um, so, I have people like Jason, for example, or like great, you know, up and comers in this that you know I think are going to be doing great things in esports down the road. And uh, thank you. Somebody that applied, no problem, man. Uh, somebody that applied to something that I that I looked at my kind of career path, and I said, this is me ten years ago, and we got a, a resume from a, 
uh, Tyler Rosen, who ran the Tespo event. And, oh, uh, yeah, I know him. Really smart so, kid. I'm bringing Tyler to Anaheim. Uh, we still got to just email me back that he's available. And, uh, and uh, I want to, sh- th- along the lines of the ecosystem I was talking about, I would love to see a collegiate side of this. And uh, the, the event they did with the resources they had, how could you not be blown away? But with, you know, these, I don't want to, I'm not saying this in a, like a derogatory way, these kids did. I mean, that was awesome. I mean, every player that went had an amazing time. The, the production value was great. And, uh, uh, I definitely want to have him come out, see what we do, uh, have him learn from what we do, and I'd love to learn from him. And uh, I think people like that out there on in the scene, uh, creating this level below. Like, I'm not saying their event wasn't on par with ours. I'm just saying that you know, creating a, a an avenue where somebody can make a, a name for themselves and compete on that level. Um, I think that's important, and I want to support it. So I think uh, you know that's one way that. I, you know, supporting the individuals that are out there creating these opportunities for uh, players to come up, I think is is important for MLG. So, um, yeah. You know, I think uh, I think for a lot of uh, individuals out there that think about, you know, should I put something local together? Should I cultivate uh, StarCraft or League of Legends or whatever you love players in your area? I don't want to put words in your mouth, Adam, but I mean, I think you're saying to them, absolutely, it is much easier for me to assess the quality of your work by you running successful events, uh, but being successful at something that I see that you have those skills, I can see player feedback, I can look at video, get results, I know that you have some of the logistics, some of the organizational uh, abilities, and obviously the ability to build partnerships and attract players. All those skills are very difficult to teach. That's why you're going to choose from the people that are doing it. Is that is that fair to say that? I I am going to choose. I would think it's completely fair to say that. And I don't think I think it'd be too much of a risk for us to ever hire somebody um, into the space that we then have to. We've made our we we've made uh, big mistakes in the past hiring people that don't necessarily understand the space and trying to teach them. It doesn't something that you really. You could learn it, but you're never going to inherently appreciate it or understand it or love it. And uh, we need to find people that love this and have a passion for it and are hungry. Um, mm-hmm. As I said to Tyler, I said, what's your motivations for coming out here? I was like, I look at you and I see myself 10 years ago. And you know, in business, you never discount the, the hungry, intelligent person out there. And uh, I mean, are you coming to kind of supplant me? Or are you coming to learn? And are you coming to you know, be a part of this? Because if you're, if you're coming to be a part of it, uh, I'll help you, but if you're coming to, you know, come backstage and take notes, and then come and, you know, uh, down the road, you know, just take me out, then th- that's another thing. So I mean, I-, I definitely want to give back to the people that are trying to build what we're all mutually building together, um, and I don't think it needs to be competitive when we do that. Awesome, Jason. Were you going to say something, or uh, somebody else is going to ask something? I think. Yeah, it's a completely different subject. So if that if we're done with that topic, um, I was actually going to ask Adam. Adam, I noticed a little while ago that uh, you had mentioned on Twitter something to the effect of, "Well, I wasn't going to, but it looks like I've got to fly back to Korea soon." So, any reason why you're taking the trip over that you might be able to share with us? <laughs> well, I can't go anymore. Um, last time I, I needed to book my <laughs> ticket, it was back up to almost ten grand. Um, Ooh. yeah, I mean, uh, so <laughs> I won't say that people from MLG aren't still going next week, but, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, there's some stuff going on over there that we're trying to announce some more stuff for, before Anaheim. Nice. Okay. So we might expect to see some sort of news coming out. Who else is going to go over that way? If you, uh, might be at least let us know. Well, our glorious leader is going over and then, uh, mm-hmm. everyone's, uh, favorite uh, former gut frag guy lee chen is going as well um but uh yeah i wasn't i had some obligations uh personal obligations i couldn't attend but stuff kind of uh, heated up to a degree so it was kind of required that i go but uh like i said uh i might have to do a video skype uh, for the meetings that we're talking about 
Sounds good. Yeah, I was just curious because I had seen it on Twitter, so I figured I would ask about it. Uh, a couple other questions that have come to me uh, since we started this. I'll just fire them off real quick. Earlier you had mentioned the 2v2 for StarCraft. Any chance we could see any sort of team clan wars for StarCraft in the future, in MLG's future? Is that something you might be working towards? Yep. Ooh, I like it. That would be really cool. Uh, and one other completely random quick question, uh, and I'm just kind of bouncing all over the place here, but these are things that have come to me through Twitter, things like that. Um, Fighting Game Arena is coming up right around the corner. And we were talking about commentators earlier. I know that Juicebox is going to be coming up, and you got the HD stream that's going to be starting to be sold for, what, I think it's $4.99. That's coming right around the corner. Um any other news that we can expect to come out? Anything that we will be able to see different on the fighting game arena? I mean, that's only, uh, I think, what, a week and a half away? There will be some uh, commentary talent that hasn't been at MLG and hasn't traditionally been involved in the titles that will be running that will be present. Um, we'll be bringing well, you might the- as well tell us who those are since it's so close. <laughs> 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 I mean, really, I mean, it's by this point, I'm sure it's all signed up anyway. Uh... I believe we might have a Gutex in the house. Um, Gutex. That's why he isn't doing the old show anymore. So, because he said he had other things that uh, other things he had to move on to, and we had speculated, but possibly might be that announcement coming. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, Nice. I mean, we're, we're bringing. I mean, even for like, (laughs) we received. uh, I was looking at Test Your Might, and uh, I, I posted on there that. People were giving us so much shit because seven of the eight or six of the eight uh, Mortal Kombat players are from New York City. They're like, MLG's touting this big thing. Like, they're bringing in people from – like, they're flying them in and all these people from New York City. It's just like – I posted. I said, listen, guys. I mean, we locked out this time, obviously. Um, but for St- St- or for Soul Calibur, we're bringing in two people from France. No questions asked. And uh, they finished top eight Soul Calibur. They earned it. And it's not like we're going to find domestic people that qualified um, – you know, maybe ninth and tenth to to bring in their stead because it's too expensive. We're going to win some, we're going to lose some, but the 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 end of the at the end of the day, the top eight from those respective games that earned their spot, we're going to bring them to the arena and we're going to have them play for money and we're going to give them a VIP experience and have them play and feel like stars. And um, it might not be exactly what uh, that community is used to, but you know, hopefully we can find some middle ground for what works for both uh, parties, and you know, we'll we'll learn from what we do, and you know, hopefully they'll. You know, we can find something that we all enjoy to to watch. I mean, I think the arena is going to be an amazing event. Awesome. As a quick yeah. question about the about the arena, uh, Adam, and if or about the fighting game arena, um, and I'm, I apologize if this was already announced, um, but I, I am curious if uh, it's a sim- it's similar to StarCraft in the sense of if you place a top, like, let's say top four in the fighting game community arena, are you also going to send those players uh, expenses paid to MLG Spring Championships? No, and and the reason why is because, like I said earlier, there's no subjective subjective advantage um, uh, we try to to give for any title we run, and I don't feel that the format that we have in Columbus, I mean, excuse me, in the arena, is something that should tie in directly to Anaheim. So, um, this that was a standalone event, and those players will not be then flown out to Anaheim. Okay, I understand and agree. One other question about the fighting game arena, since it kind of runs parallel to what's going on with the like the 2v2 in StarCraft. Can we see any sort of side events for the fighting game arena, or is it just going to be strictly the games and the tournament? Definitely see some side events. These guys, uh, we'll let them run as many, I mean, we'll let them play as late as they want. I mean, Cool. So maybe some casuals, things like that? Yeah, I mean, uh, we'll have some more details to be announced, but there'll be a Dr. Pepper stream there as well. Um, cool. That, um, you know, when, say, it's Soul Calibur time, I mean, there may be some awesome Mortal Kombat, like free play and money matches or whatever else going on in the Dr. Pepper room um, in parallel. So That's awesome. Cool. I, I, heard, I heard this week that uh, Filthy Rich from Namco might be bringing himself out for this event. So, I mean, we might have a lot of uh, you know personalities in the room that might want to jump on the mic or just... <laughs> if so, you have to get him to MC again, man. He was the best MC ever. Rich is a fantastic. man. That's really I'm good to hear, good. though. That, that, that would be great. Every I mean, publisher, every publisher from the FGC community that's working with us right now is really excited about what we're doing together, and uh, they're really supportive. And uh, like I said, we can't 
uh, we're not where we want to be yet, and uh, we still have a lot to prove with the community, and we recognize that, and we don't want to screw it up. And the publishers that are working with us definitely want to help us not screw it up. And uh, we're listening to the communities, we're listening to the players, we're listening to um, talking to. Um, I don't want to put them on a the spot because of, you know <laughs> I don't want to uh, marry marry them to what's the the dirty term in the fighting games community, the esports community. But there's some tos out there that in the fighting games community that. I exchange emails with you know on a weekly basis that are are helping us out and giving us, giving us advice and telling us what to do and what not to do and um, we'll get there and we're we're trying. I mean that's really great to hear. I mean yeah, it's about time that I mean wouldn't you agree, Kurt? I mean, I, if I were a tournament organizer right now in the fighting game community, I would realize that uh, there is a great opportunity to work in a positive way with Major League Gaming, which. You know, the thing that's always got me is this idea of fear and competition. Get rid of it. Just get rid of that and work together. And I think, it, and this isn't feel-good stuff. This is like just good business. It's good yeah. business to, to do those kind of things. So, I mean, it's really encouraging to hear that some local tournament organizers are reaching out in a positive way, supportive of what you're doing, because uh, that's going to help you too also, I mean, down the line. I think you're going to be able to... Uh, you know, one you're already reaping yeah. some of their knowledge benefits because of, of the advice. And I think, that, you know. and I think Revelations is around the same time that uh, MLG Anaheim is too, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. So, hey, I think it just got announced. Um, the it, it's 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 hard to um, constantly have to do have this battle because it's, I, I saw some conversation today where it's even MLG doesn't care about the community and they're just coming in and trying to take it over. And I I would just. I would love an example of what we're trying to take over, like what we're trying to do that's so malicious. Um, we're just trying to run great events, and I feel like if we put these guys on a stage and make them into help help make them into the bigger stars um, by putting more eyeballs on them, because um, the guys that are going to be stars have deserve deserve it. Obviously, we're just putting them in front of more people. I feel like that's going to benefit every other event out there. Like we're going to make they're going to have a bigger draw or more attention because this player now goes to their event and they've had more exposure via MLG and our distribution partners. It's not like we're trying to own their event or do anything malicious to them. It's, I think I, I really truly view this as a collaborative effort to build this community. And it, I wish it would stop being so adversarial. I just don't get it. Speaking of, but you were talking about publishers that are working with you. I have to sort of poke that elephant in the room again. Any updates at all by chance with Capcom? No. Okay. Sad. But uh, one other question: Any updates uh, about Valve? Uh, are you asking a question? Or are you just looking for a general uh, update? Uh, well, I mean, I think I'm at, a lot of people are talking about Dota Two. A lot of people are talking about uh, Counter Strike Go. I mean, they're talking about those games. There's no, and there's no sense of talking about Dota Two though when he just talked about LOL. Yeah, every game, well, he did every. Every game that's coming out, I didn't talk about LOL. Let's not say that I did. I, uh... <laughs> okay, since since we concluded we concluded that LOL would would probably be a title, uh, I don't think that Dota Two would be a title on top of that. So I, I'll say this: every every title that the community is anticipating coming out um, in the next calendar year, uh, we are talking to their publisher right now. Hmm. Except for CS:GO, not talking to them at all. Well, I mean, I said, I mean, Sundance has told us this before. He said, "We, you know, we're not, we're not. No, none of the deals that you make make you uh, stuck to, to that are exclusive. That you can only support one publisher's game and nobody else. I mean, that's to be honest, I don't see that as being a good business model for major league gaming anyway. Uh, if you put all your eggs in one publisher's basket or allow a publisher to say, you know." Uh, of uh, I, you can only have my games. The response to me, well, then you might as well have your own league because this is silly, right? So, I mean, I, I'm not, maybe you do do that, Adam, but, I mean, it just wouldn't make good sense to me to have to play the exclusive game with any publisher. That doesn't feel like a good deal for Major League Gaming. I mean, can you comment on that? or? I, like I said before, that any title that we pick up needs to have support from the publisher involved because it doesn't make sense because ultimately they control the IP. Um and we want to put it on on this. We want to present it how they want it presented, and we need to make sure that we're working together hand in hand. And if that relationship's not present uh, before we launch it, then we're not going to move forward with that title. 
Here's a question for you, Adam. And and this is nothing to do with what MLG is picking up, but this is more just your personal opinion of the games that are coming out this year. If you could see one game that you would like to work with in the future, that you would like to see on the circuit, whether it be something like a Guild Wars or something like a Firefall or something like that, anything in particular that you personally would like to see, what's the one that you're most anticipating? Uh, so you're, you're, you're going to ask me a question, a loaded question in a friendly manner, and you're <laughs> going to expect a serious answer back. I'll tell you, here's my answer for you. Here's my answer for you if you want to ask me a sneaky question. I want to have a uh, vanilla WoW campaign raid oh. race to, through Molten Core. I want to have a Halo 1 2v2 tournament, and I want to have Mario Kart on the original Super Nintendo, wherever it was. That's Quake three, Quake, that. Quake three, CPM. <laughs> what are you talking about? Come on. <laughs> you ask me questions and expect the real answer. That's what you get. All right, I've got a question that that I think is fair, uh, and I don't think at all. You know, and I mean this very sincerely. A lot of people here don't know you, and I think it would be really cool to learn. You know, do you have time to game? And not even talking about titles that are future. I mean, right now. What are you, some of your favorites to watch, and what are, what are your, do you have time to play? And if you do, what do you play? Um, so what I, I think that's fair, yeah. right? So I, uh, I'm a big, uh, I, my favorite games ever are Halo 1 and uh, WoW. Um, I don't play WoW as much anymore. Uh, what I'm anticipating, I'm looking forward to Guild Wars for sure. I think Guild Wars is going to be amazing. Um, I'm looking forward to Diablo 3. Are you joining VV's Guild for for Guild Wars? Because we take you know displaced staff members if you need a place at home. <laughs> we'll be easy uh, on you in the trial period too. I, I uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> uh, I definitely I definitely want to figure out a way to run Diablo on. Uh, I played it at BlizzCon and uh, a couple or two years ago. And one of the core metrics I see for games that we run is that you know not only does it have to have a huge following, um, you know, boxes sold. It has to have, you know, uh, a competitive uh, aspect to it, right? So those are core tenets that goes without saying. But one of the things that looks past that, you know, goes beyond that is it has to be fun when you're competing. Like you have to want to get on at night and it doesn't feel like a job. It's like I want to get better at this game not only because there's um, achievable ways that I could, you know, I beat Jason in a one-on-one match and like I can improve my skills. But I have fun doing it when I do that. And um, Diablo, we had not only did we feel like it had a lot of competitive merits, but um, I felt I, I had a ton of fun. We played it like four hours at BlizzCon in a row uh, because Blizzard gave us special access to play on you know the stations we were abusing. <laughs> and uh, I, games like that, I think, uh, have a lot of potential, and I, I hope that we can figure it out because I think uh, they could be really big. Oh, that's cool. Thanks. No, that's really good to know. We'll let your WoW love go, though. That probably that way that like as an MMO player, you know, that's like it's kind of the Walmart of MMOs, and you know, we won't take it too hard because at least we knew Halo One took skill, right? So at least there might be some skill involved. <laughs> vanilla Vanilla WoW is incredible for its its glitches. I mean, like the shaman, whatever the extra swing of Wind Fury, and the the chaining the whatever the totem that slowed people down. I forget what it's called now. I mean, all the things that made it. Like broken to a degree, made it also skillful because you had to know, you had to be able to know, you had to know how to use those. And same thing with Halo One, with like the double smacks and the grenade tricks and everything else that was broken and the the lag shots. Um, those are what made it great. Well, so let me, to be honest with you, I don't think anybody is going to argue. Well, maybe some, but no one's going to argue the best WoW was probably coming, you know, in the vanilla stage of WoW, uh, right in those early earlier days. Um, uh, I think a lot of people that really value skill at least are going to say that. Again, I know some will disagree, but um, you know, I'm still bitter that at the time that WoW came out, that was also the time EverQuest 2 came out, and that was the road I took, and uh, WoW ended up being a lot more popular, but also a lot easier to play, you know? Well, uh, I mean, WoW, WoW took a really drastic change um, in terms of the, li- like the life of that game when they decided to, like, Make arena and PvP really official. I mean, I don't think any, I don't think anybody would argue with me if I said that the most fun anybody that loved PvP had was playing Terran Mill or going to Terran Mill and, you know, going out and, and doing wide open world PvP um, from, you know, the respective towns. And 
Blizzard's not stupid. They saw that and they tried to formalize it. And I don't know if they've ever got it right. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just like the, the publishers have the right idea. They try to, to, to like latch onto something the community loves. But sometimes when you take something that existed on its own and you try to put official parameters around it, it doesn't always work out and it forever changes the course of that title. And since you are saying you're talking to all the publishers uh, of the games that are coming out, can you talk to ArenaNet or NCSoft, or do you have an answer? And I, you probably don't, but uh, you, or actually you might, I guess. But uh, what's up with no spectator mode in Guild Wars in these certain of these situations here, especially for uh, what are we going to do with Guild Wars in a spectator mode? That's my question. Answer? No, no. And NDA. Oh my God. Did you pull that one out, or is that a really an NDA? <laughs> that's I, I can't answer. Okay, that's uh, fair. I know you can't. All right, all right. Hmm. I think Jason, we are coming up to the end of the show. We got about ten minutes left, so let's uh, Most let's let you wrap it up and start moving that out. And if we got any final questions, let's ask them and let's call it. Yeah, Adam, I really do appreciate the fact that you uh, came on tonight. I mean, we were originally going to have a little less time for this part of the discussion because we did have another guest originally but as that they did cancel we uh, i'm really glad we had to get the, get the details the cbs deal um so much good news about the arena and the fighting game arena really huge thank you to you for taking some time out of your night especially with all this big news to come and share some of these details with us uh before you do head out any other things that you'd like to say any other leaks you want to give us or or any shout outs um, well, I mean, honestly, shameless plug, I, I hope everyone purchases the Spring Pass, and if you do, VVV2012 at checkout will help support directly all the guys on the stream that put on this great content and support amateur players and professional players um, it, with an MLG and every league out there, not just MLG. And uh, if you're going to buy it from MLG and support MLG and support the players that are there, and you know, not just support us because I hate that shit too, like buy it because it's worth it, right? But if you're going to buy it, support VVV when you do it. VVV2012 at checkout is your code. And uh, we're going to put on a great show this weekend, and I hope you guys all tune in. Thank you so much, sir. Um, we definitely appreciate the time, as I said before. And uh, besides just the, the plug there, for this, uh, any other shout-outs, anybody from staff, anything like that before you head out? I'm uh, really excited to see all the guys coming in. Um, I whether whatever league they're playing in, uh, we've kind of we've grown close to all the players. Whether we're grown to titles, so I'm excited to see the players that are flying in to compete, and I hope they do really well. And I'm really excited to see my friends from Korea, the you know, Tasis on the to Hawaii, uh, to you know Marcus, to anybody, JP, Rob Simpson, uh, Grubby, all these guys coming in. It's going to be an amazing show, and I'm excited to see the friends that I've made. And you know, we, we look forward to these weekends and. An incredible amount of work, but I think it's worth it. And I, like I said, I hope you guys tune in and see us do it. And Adam, I appreciate you having me on, guys. Oh, anytime, dude. Here's hoping that uh, when we do get some of these other big announcements that you say are forthcoming, that we can uh, get you or someone else from your staff back on the show so we can continue talking about these awesome moves that you are making in the world that we know and love, that is eSports. Adam Apicella, you're a great man. We appreciate all the hard work that you do for us in the field that we love. Appreciate your time, sir. Thank you for stopping by. Can we say hi to the best gamer on campus, Detach Charles, uh, in chat that's texting me and hitting us on Twitter and supporting us and uh, one of our longtime employees. Let's all say hi to you, Touch. Hey, what's going oh, on? Oh, well, hello. <laughs> There's a shout out. Make him famous, right? Oh, uh, Detach is famous in his own Detach, right? So, what games? What game does he play? Detach plays everything. He's, if you don't know Detach, you don't know that he's probably the best player in every title he runs. And Check Six is indeed still banned. So I'll, I'll let you guys go. <laughs> Will, will about ever, BBV, are they still bad? I hold on, say, hold on. Can I get Wait forgiven minute. for that verbal slip last week at least? Because, you know, I would never want to compare anybody to Kurt, so I apologize for that. Like, formally hold apologize. Hold on, for those, for those that don't know, though, when Adam was talking about how he got 1,200 emails from applicants, I did uh, be sure to put my name in that and just send him an email with a nice little poem. It was uh, it was fantastic. <laughs> I what know, was that poem, I, Kurt? And when I read it in my head, I read it with that deep Kentucky accent so that, you know, really. <laughs> you 
hear that uh, accent more often than not. I know a so lot of people. It, from North it was just as indecipherable when I read it in my own head as it is when he's on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you guys should have subtitles actually for Kurt on this. Oh God. Oh, yeah, man. we put subtitles on the show, and it would be babble, 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 Counter Strike Go, babble, 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 Counter Strike, babble, babble. I like Tekken. That's the whole fucking thing. We'll be done. <laughs> Uh, where's the whole extent of it? Where's this uh, poem? Let me find it. I, rem- I think I remember it. It was. Uh, I got it here. Hold on. All right. Check out, uh, check out the room. I saw that Where's this in red? Violence or blue? I am banned from MLG and VVV is now too. Have a fun day. <laughs> 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 I know you enjoyed that, buddy. I know you did. I know. <laughs> Oh, that's but, awesome. Yeah, Dad, Adam, we really appreciate you on the show, buddy. Um, I am sure we're going to have you back on soon so you can pick on me more and uh, all that good stuff. Adam, it's 11 o'clock in New York City where you're at. It's way past uh, way past the time that I feel good about even having you stay. Thank you so much. We're going to let you go. Have a good night, Adam. I'm the last person here, fellas. I'm going to walk home to my hotel. So I'll talk One to more thing, though, Adam, again, congratulations. Seriously, thank you. Thanks, guys. I mean, honestly, congratulations to everybody because it's going to go for everyone in this space. So it's not something MLG's hoarding for themselves. Everyone's going to benefit. So thanks for having me on. Hope you tune in, and uh, have a great night, everyone. Take care, Adam. Take care, Adam. All right. Let's do a quick deconstruction now. It's almost like family hour now because, uh, <laughs> you know, Adam's gone, and we'll get out. So I want to go I want to go back to, to Mike here, No Control, and uh, he had messaged me that uh, some of the League of Legends players had gotten a little excited um, so I'm just going to tell Mike, you know, on the show that, uh, he should probably get our team ready for any kind of open qualifier and start looking, I think inside the League of legends community, uh, if they should have an opportunity to have an open online qualifier, um, or something to even show up where they can buy a ticket, that's going to be a really huge opportunity. But, uh, if you were to guess, Mike, knowing what you know about competitive League of legends, would you say, uh, more than likely, it's going to be an online event? Uh, I think it's going to be an online event. Um, it's most likely it's most likely, most likely going to be about four or five events. That's what I think. Um, probably top three are going to qualify for MLG, maybe like a 16-man bracket. Um, that, that, at least that's what I think. I don't think there's, any, there's enough teams uh, in North America that would be able to qualify... Um, better more more teams than 16 that would qualify for that you think it would be three only three teams go to the finals um well from each event so you can have more than one chance to be able to uh, okay so for me for me okay from each from each event okay i got you yes yes so you're, so you're saying saying you think there, there will be five events five online qualifiers is that what you're saying uh, probably, and there's probably going to be like one wild card or something like that. Uh, something like that's going to go on, but it's definitely going to be an online event. They wouldn't make it a LAN event. Um, they wouldn't be able to get the the uh, sh- people showing up that they need. Yeah, I mean, I'll go. I'll probably go. Uh, what do you What do you think, Jerry? I'm thinking two two online qualifiers, one two max, uh, with I would say top six teams. Um, go to the finals, I would think. And the reason I say six uh, is because that's what they, they did before for, I think, MLG, like Raleigh, um, is I think it was six or six or eight. Um, Dude, so it's like I, CLG, it's Epic, Dignitas. I swear to God, if I were them, if, if Riot's going to play, go big or go home. Just, you know what, the top 10, 12 teams, get them out there. Right, work with Riot, work with the teams, work with out there, get them out there. Because those stream numbers, if Riot does indeed, right, Adam, it's going to be a game that we're going to show in a way that's never been showed before. I think I think what's a lot more interesting is will they do European teams? So people like Fnatic, who damn sure deserve to go places, AAA, uh, CLG, EU, stuff like that. That's um, why I think I, really, I think that's they will. why I think they are absolutely going to get invited. I mean, again. I'm not the, this is not MLGs to do alone. If I'm right, I'm going to want the, the teams that are most recognized out there, and let's get those up and comers out there, right? Let's start to build that, you know, get even, and I do even get the Moscow Fives out there, right? Mm-hmm. Get teams out um, there that Moscow have done Moscow Five well. deserves it, yeah. I mean, right? Get um, the teams out there that have done well, have proven themselves on the international stage, get them out there. I mean, I don't see any reason not to. 
right? The and only reason the only reason I would say ten or twelve might be much, and you could be right, but you got to look at the fact that they're going to increase the SE two open bracket size. They're also going to have, from the way that we understand it from this, and this is just uh, sort of guesses, they're also going to have open computers for people to play whatever quote unquote unreleased game Art quote unquote swarm. <laughs> quote unquote quote quote. Uh, for people to play as spectators there, and I think he said there was a 200 computer setup for that. Yes. Um, that's going to be a lot of computers. If you had 12 League of Legends teams on top of that, the entire SC2 bracket and the uh, quote unquote quote unquote announced beta quote unquote, <laughs> you know, so that is a lot of people. Um, but that being said. I would love to see them be, you know, them be that many teams. Uh, I don't think there's been in a competition with that many teams. Has there? No control, you would know better than me. A really, a really popular competition, at least. IEM was only, like, what, six? Yep. Um, IPL was six? Well, IEM uh, also had, had the group stage, and then they had the bracket stage, where if you qualified from your group, you'd move on to the bracket, which would be interesting, too, if MLG did. But I'm really, I'm really excited to see what Riot and MLG have been working on together to, to make the game uh, more of a spectator sport, I guess you could say. I think that's more interesting than anything is what exactly the news is there. See, here's um, because, the thing, too. Because me personally, me personally, before you come in, Joe, real quick, me personally, I'm a firm believer that y- we can make things work for this space. We don't have to completely scrap a game because of it, because it lasts thirty five, forty five minutes, um, or as long as an hour. Um, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily that that League of Legends as a regular um, title, which uh, would be what is it called? Yeah. What's the main map called? No control. Summoner's Rift. Summoner's Rift. I don't think Summoner's Rift needs to be completely scrapped, all because it's a little bit hard to run commercials in between like that. I think IPL did a good thing when they had certain, a uh, lot like the SC two things. They've got logos in the bottom right corner. Sort of, you know, still hitting the sponsors and stuff like that. Running some ads in between certain things. Um, I think it can still be done. What they said about Dominion before, though, is that uh, Dominion's not really... People want to see Summoner's Rift. They don't want to see people playing Dominion. And they wouldn't change the entire the entire game of, of what's competitive about it and what people have been playing for forever in MOBAs uh, just to make it more of a spectator sport. Um, Dominion isn't going to be what they're going with. Um, with that being said, I really don't know what they could do to Summoner's Rift um, to make it like that. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that. I still think yeah, it'll be, really be interesting. Cool. It'll be interesting to see. I still think it'd be really cool to do both. To be totally honest, to have Summoner's Rift, to have Dominion, just like they do multiple game types in, like let's say a first-person shooter uh, or other games of that nature, to actually go back and forth between two to showcase the different strategy involved. Will that ever happen? Uh, that's to be decided. But nevertheless, well, just as just as a note, just as a note, he said he said that it, on a, an official game title, they would be using more than one game mode. If you remember right, see, and that's why I think Jason's point is really interesting. Um, look, I want to keep talking about League of Legends, but why don't we announce the winner of the Counter Strike Kurt Key Hunt Check Six Special <laughs> Go? Go Did. home or go Counter Strike, whatever. You I don't even know this or... guy. No, no. Who, who, who won? Who won? Spike like won it. Spike won it. No. <laughs> Spike's the one giving it away. Come on. No, uh, really okay. shout out to VVV Spike for giving us this key so that we could give it away. Uh, but the winner for actually tweeting, the rules again were that they had to tweet at Losers Bracket in the tweet somewhere and a link to the show. Uh, but we did pick a random winner, and the name of the winner is Julius Victor, who goes by at our realistic on Twitter. So we would like to give you a free CSGO beta key. The way we are going to do that, please message to at Losers Bracket your Steam email so that we can have VVV Spike add you and give you your copy of the CSGO beta. So once again, congratulations to Julius Victor at our Realistic on Twitter for winning the CSGO beta key. From the Kurt Go Home or Go Counter Strike giveaway, <laughs> and just and just as a note, because it w- we wouldn't be uh, a show if I didn't mention Counter Strike. Um, there's a lot of people that have messaged me during the Adam interview, wanted me to bring up Counter Strike, 
the dual network in the chat was arguing with some guys about Counter Strike. Look, dude, I absolutely love the fact that you are a CS supporter. You know I am, but you got to understand. You, you have to understand what the whole point is. Is that MLG has said multiple times, and IPO for that matter, they're not going to support it without Valve paying them. Now that, that's the end of the discussion. Of course, they didn't come out right and say that, but that's that's how it works. So we as a community, if we want to do that, need to be pushing for them to stop running these independent events like they're doing for the Dota International and start giving their money to people like MLG and IPL to run their events if we want to see something like CS at an MLG or an IPL. Yep, and and that goes the same true for, you know, the Halo players. And, you know, I just don't think the, you know, when, when you're not when you're not sitting where – Say Kurt and I and Jason, where we sit looking, you know, and even no control. Mike's been looking, you know, used to play StarCraft now in the League of Legends. When you're looking at a broad landscape of esports, it's once the business of it makes sense to you, the point that Kurt just said, that that developer support is critical. It's now not optional. There is no um, oh, you know, I really hope that Epic will patch Gears of War. No, no, no. We're, it's not going on the circuit unless it's uh, a signed, done deal that it's ready to go. And to be honest, the the players who are into that, Blizzard, Riot, um, obviously the fighting games that we are seeing, they get it. But it is not MLG. It is not EG. It is not VV Gaming. It is the developers. It's not the lack of community support. Some of these games are very popular. I use Call of Duty as an example, right? Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 followed by Modern Warfare 2 and then people still playing Call of Duty 4 uh, in the top 10 Xbox titles or top 12 Xbox titles. Even and, and Activision is part of Blizzard. Even they don't play well. And their game doesn't end up on there. If you're going to go by the numbers... The number one game that should be on the 360 without question is Call of Duty. The numbers are overwhelming. It's got three different communities, but if Activision isn't going to play and isn't going to create the right game, it's dead on arrival. Hmm. And of those Halo players who argue, or the, again, 343 doesn't support it, doesn't go in. When Halo 4 drops November 6th, if there isn't at least two months ahead of time that MLG and 343 are long and MLG gets what it wants, it's just not big enough compared to the international, and this is the part that a lot of players forget, we're talking about internationally the number of eyes on a StarCraft match, the number of eyes on a League of Legends match is pretty overwhelming. Well, you just need to, uh, another thing is people need to read the line, read between the lines too, when you hear support. Support does not always mean what you immediately think it to mean as far as uh, supporting and putting in a good spectator mode. Counter-Strike no doubt in my mind, I mean, Jerry, Jason, feel free to argue, but it has some of the best spectator components and the best components of a competitive game ever. Even the new CSGO we haven't even seen yet. We, we are sure fairly will, considering they're going to be using a lot of the Dota 2 elements. No one's um, going to no one's going to argue that Counter-Strike but that, did not yeah, have... Look, exactly. Counter -Strike sets, Counter-Strike without question set the stage, and I think we often underestimated how successful and important the spectatability of Counter-Strike 1.6 and even into Source was. We, I think a lot of people overlooked that. I know when I started back in 2007, um, the game was dated. I had written it off. But if there is one reason when sometimes we go, oh, you hate Counter-Strike. I don't hate anything, right? I mean, I'm joking a lot of times, but what you said, Kurt, is really true. Counter-Strike, part of their success was that. And I want to throw something out there that, you know, we're talking about spectatability. League of Legends is really spectatable. And then here's a thing that uh, someone a little bit smarter than me mentioned to get me to get it started thinking, said, you know, um, do you think it's possible? And I'm going to ask no control first, then Kurt, you can come in and Jason. But do you think it's possible that League of Legends, Riot, one of the things they could do is because you, you you know you mentioned uh, Mike that they kind of delayed releasing heroes and I started thinking about wow you know they got this entire microtransaction system inside League of Legends you know wouldn't it be really cool 
if there were certain heroes or, or things associated with certain teams. I mean, they reskin all those things. How cool would it be if there's like some of our favorite players, some of the favorite heroes they have, there's a VVV skin for that that people could buy, right? That's a way to monetize what VV Gaming does, hmm. right? Show support for our team and our players. Uh, and I don't mean just for us, obviously. There could be skins of Dignitas and skins of any players that people really enjoy. Team Solo Mid, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know why anybody would buy a Team Solo Mid one. You know, but, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I was just saying that, you know, that's, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So I'm going to start with you, Mike, then I'm going to go to Kurt. Mike, do you think that could work? Is that a way to monetize it? Um, well, right now you're able to uh, make a skin yourself and put it into your own file so that only you can see it. Um, but I honestly don't think that it would bring enough money in to be able to uh, be really profitable. Um, plus, what, what would you even do with the skins? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Kurt, what do you yeah, think? I, mean, I actually love the idea. I don't necessarily know if they'll do it. Um, I would love to see them do something where, where they partner with certain teams, certain community sites, certain leagues, and do s- certain skins for the leagues that show off certain elements of the game and things like that. That being said, it might have to be limited to strictly the spectator mode. That might be the only problem in, in my mind. Um, because if, if you do it in an open sort of pub, I guess is the is, is what it's called, or a, a, uh, a ranked match or, or anything like that, normal. or a ranked match, normal mode, or anything like that. I think I feel like League of Legends and Riot will think that'll be getting a little bit too complicated for people to really understand. And one of their biggest things is they want it to be a quote-unquote noob-friendly you know, game when you first open it up. They want it to be acceptable for people that have never seen it before. So it would have to be something that would be strictly to the competition realm, Strictly, that was uh, four tournaments. I do see them doing that because, it, and it took a long time for CS to do this. But CS is one of the, as far as I know of, one of the only people that really did this. Is they skinned, overlaid the um, models for the counter terrorists and the terrorists. And you see this with IEM. IEM did it by putting a big IEM logo on the terrorist back and the counter terrorist back. Um, ESEA does it currently now. Uh, CPL did it, but very lightly at the very end. So. I think they'll do it. I just think it might take a little bit of time. Um, I don't know if they'll they'll do it for profitability, though. I think they'll do it just to make tournament organizers happy. You know, I think uh, it'll make it'll make tournament organizers happy to see. Hey, there's an MLG logo on that guy, or hey, he's he's, he's toting a big MLG balloon. <laughs> you know, uh, or hey, Rise is hitting that guy with a noisemaker. What's going on? You know, <laughs> I mean, it'll, it'll be something interesting. Uh, I don't necessarily think they'll do it immediately, but I'd love to see something like that. Um, let me add to this a little bit. I mean, Riot already does skins that you can only get for doing certain things. Say, for example, I'm playing as Nasus and I'm using my Riot skin, the, the, the Riot skin that you get for going to events. I mean, you had to go to like an MLG or, or some sort of LAN event to get the code to get that skin, right? Um, there is no reason that they couldn't do something like this for say, teams or events or things like that, and have it put out as a way to monetize because I will tell you what, people buy skins. You know, it's crazy to think about it, but, you know, $10, $15 just to, to make your character look a little different, every little bit counts too. I see no reason why this couldn't be something they could pursue. And one thing that would be really cool is if there was, say, like a VVV skin uh, and a, say, an evil genius's skin or something like that for when those two teams were playing with one another, you could actually have the distinct colors for the teams on the characters, say like a red and black and white for VVV versus, you know, EG with their colors, more blue focused, you know, it would be an other it could visual also, it thing. It could also be a rev share, a rev share yeah. opportunity, which most definitely I absolutely love. Yeah. Um, why not? For every person that buys a VVV League of Legends skin for a character, uh, League of Le- you know, we get 10% of that. You know, So we can promote, hey, purchase our skins this week. I mean, honestly, there's a lot that they could do with that. And, you know, it's an open I think, potential yeah. for revenue stream. I think, I, think that whole, See, I think that whole model is very, very new. I mean that whole thing. The, you buy, and it might not be necessarily be 100% new. Ten years ago, it was happening, but still, you understand what I mean. I think now with the boom, 
I think that is new. I think that is that whole thing is new, and they're really looking at ideas to to figure out ways to push it forward. Um, so I think I think anything is open to opportunity later down the road, um, which is also why I think people that say uh, SC two has a much better, and I don't mean, and it, I, I would say it, you know, it definitely has uh, a great chance but a lot of people are saying the sc2 has a leaps and bounds uh better uh mainstream focus like that it has that that mainstream uh, audience will actually be able to watch sc2 a lot easier than lol i disagree and we talked about this before the before the show jerry i mean it's i disagree with that whole aspect i think lol has a lot of yeah we'll talk about this i think we need to get catch your audience up just to be clear what we're talking about um Someone had mentioned that StarCraft was basically easier to spectate than League of Legends. And both Kurt and I deeply disagree with that position. I think that, uh, you know, watching both, I think it's very easy to, uh, you know, I don't know what to say, but get into to understand League of Legends. I made a comparison earlier today, and some people may disagree with it, but the tempo of League of Legends is very similar to, let's say, soccer, uh, where there's these high intense moments where somebody's going to score a goal. There is a scoring opportunity. So if you're a fan of soccer, I think League of Legends is going to be great. We know how soccer, how popular soccer is around the world. Um, StarCraft is a little bit more... I think a slightly faster tempo because they're just physically more player controlled units on the map. So there's kind of more going on, but that more on the map, I'll be honest with you. A lot of people who casually play Starcraft and watch Starcraft. um, Yeah, they kind of know what's going on, but sometimes I think they miss the sheer amount of skill or uh, some of the, the actual nuance stuff that's going on. Whereas in League of Legends, there are a limited number of skills per character. Once you understand those things, uh, it's a pretty quick curve after that. So I think once you sort of come over a slight hump in League of Legends, it's a lot easier to consistently spectate League of Legends than it is, I think, all the various uh, metagaming and the various uh, matches, uh, race versus race in StarCraft or, or mirror matches in StarCraft. You have a lot... More nuance to learn that I that I argue right now a lot of players don't learn. I mean, look, if you look at StarCraft, people still cry about cheese. When I think in a mature game, uh, you know, cheese doesn't exist in professional sports because primarily you understand it as a strategy. You know, when you bunt in baseball, when you do a Hail Mary pass, when you do certain things because you're either in a desperate situation or you want to surprise the opponent, right? You want to do an onside kick. Nobody screams the onside kick is cheese in football, <laughs> right? They just don't do that, right? But in StarCraft, you have all these people like, crying, and it's basically because it's fucking nerds. You know, I, I hate them, right? You're fucking nerds who just, you know, it's cheese, right? Eventually, those nerds will go away. You know, they'll find some new thing to fucking live in the cave with, and yeah. they won't troll forums all the time, <laughs> and that, right? That, yeah. that is what I'm talking about. League of Legends, that's less likely, right? You have less likely to have the idealistic nerd who cries about cheese because they don't understand that what they call cheese is a legitimate tactic like bunting in baseball, onside kick in football, the list goes on. It's in every sport. It is a tactic. But see, that's, and that's also my thing. People – go ahead, Jason. Oh, I was just going to say, I was going to actually agree with Jerry. I mean, League of Legends does have one really good thing to it being this is 5v5, are like, you know, five characters. You can see when a character dies. You can see the impact that it makes on the game. With StarCraft 2, it might be a little harder to see, oh, well, why did this smaller army come out on top? Uh, why did this gaggle of Marines just die to one Baneling? I don't understand. That might be a little bit harder to get the spectator to basically internalize say well why that why did that happen right league of legends you can see when a team is pushing forward the impact that they're making at all times uh it's a little more spread out with starcraft you know oh well there's five different bases how can i watch what's going on at each one what do i need to understand here um oh in league of legends this tower just went down i can see in the spectator mode how much gold this team has how many kills this team has 
you know, I see your point. I do, I do see your point. Kurt, continue on. Yeah, I mean, people – and people in chat are up in arms here. But here's the thing, guys. Each game has certain things that are easier to understand than others. You're right. SC2 is 1v1. Of course a 1v1 game is going to be more inter- – more, a little easier to understand. But it also balances out. It's also hard for people to understand the upgrades and what particular units do what and why they do that and how they do that. And dear God, all the little nuances StarCraft has as far as with the maps even, it's completely – it completely balances out in the sense of there's a lot of hard stuff for SC2 to understand. There's a few things that are easier to understand, hence it being 1v1, hence it being the supplies shown, things like that. But LOL, once again, balances that out in the sense of, you're right, supplies aren't shown in LOL, but you can see tower counts. You can see gold count. You can see CS. All of that stuff is fine uh, in the sense of it balances itself out. Yeah. My point is not necessarily that one is easier to understand. I'm not here to say that. I'm not the uh, end-all, be-all with that. What I, what I can say is speak, speak from personal experience. From personal experience, someone who did not watch any Brood War, did not even like any RTS games before StarCraft II, it was simply incredibly hard for me to understand at first and to get into. League of Legends, not so much. Um, and also, uh, I think the biggest thing is that people just need to stop with the comparisons. To me, you can't really compare them. It's kind of like comparing apples and oranges. It's like comparing uh, Counter-Strike 1.6 to StarCraft II. It doesn't work. It does not compute. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, that, that, I mean, that's my whole thing. Uh, is stop with the whole comparisons. Um, one, you know, might be easier to spectate and, and be a little bit easier for the mainstream later on. But we'll figure that out later on. With that being said, I think it is about time that we start wrapping this show up because we have gone a little later than what we normally do. Um, now, Jason, Jason, before before we wrap it up, buddy, I just want to run through really quickly. Let's do a quick run through of news. I don't want any comments on it. I just want to tell people news real quick and tell people where to find it out, uh, if you don't mind. I know we're late already. Um, but just, just a run through. Ah, shit it. <laughs> just a no, run listen, through. Listen, I got to call it. Let's wrap it up. I got to go to bed. So Yeah, Kurt. Oh, yeah, it's two and a half hours snaps. in. Wani little baby. That's right. I got my. <laughs> I have personal trainer in the morning. I get my eight hours. I got a good workout coming up. Uh, yeah. You yeah. know what? Don't make me put you on a gym schedule. I'll, Don't make I'll me do it. I'm doing my shout outs. All right. I'll do it live. Out. That's fine. Here's, here's the news. <laughs> okay. IPO four. Lots of viewers. Um, what else? Is there something else good going on? Really cool, awesome Guitar Hero event that we did in Chicago over the weekend. That was a lot of good fun. Uh, C2E2 is awesome in Chicago. Oh my god, it's almost like I'm doing my shoutouts now. Eric from Guitar Hero, you're awesome, buddy. Thank you. Um, but that's about it. Yeah, shoutouts to IPL for their stream numbers. Cool. Hopefully we'll get David Singh from IPL on in the future. I think we're going to try for two weeks from now since uh, we weren't able to get him this week, but we'll see. News done? Cool. No control. Your shoutouts, buddy. Shout out to All Tech, Tsunami, fucking iDream, Roshan, and Skilly, the new League of Legends team. Uh, took second in the first tournament, uh, sponsored by VVV last weekend. I uh, just wanted to give a shout out to them. Um, they did great. They're really great people, and I can almost guarantee that they're going to qualify for the next MLG. That's awesome. Uh, that's it. Very cool. All right. I almost feel like this is a really bad idea, but Kurt, please, your shout outs. <laughs> Alright, yeah, first few shout outs. Thanks again for Adam for coming on. Absolutely amazing stuff as always. He's usually brutally honest, uh, even though he does pick on me. I, I do love the insight that he, that he uh, tends to I love give. The attention, too. Who are you kidding? <laughs> Fuck you. Um, so, anyway, uh, also shout out MLG Winter Arena, or not Winter Arena. Why do I keep saying Winter Arena? Spring Arena number one coming up uh, this weekend. Watch it. Amazing Casters Grubby will be, be debu- debuting as an official caster, which is absolutely amazing to me. He did, he's done amazingly well at the two events that we've seen him cast so far. Adabisi will also be there. Shout outs to him doing his amazing ob skills as usual. Um, okay. Last few shout outs for news. Shout out to Chobo Peon. Uh, absolutely amazing guy. He is back doing uh, the sort of daily wrap up, or maybe, maybe weekly. I'm not sure. Wrap daily. up of esports news. Um, esports report, very excited daily. about that. Yeah, the esports reporter is the name. You can find him uh, twittercom slash Uh Please, please check him out. I absolutely loved his first episode. 
Um, last thing for news, Scarlet, the IPL uh, sensation, uh, the girl uh, gamer that uh, did so well at IPL4, actually finally joined a team. She fi- joined a team Eclipsia. Um, so really, really good stuff. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Cool. Jerry, the floor is yours, my friend. Any final shout-outs? I do. I have shout-outs to the following people. Um my first shout out is to our League of Legends team. Uh, they've been very entertaining, and I've learned a lot. Uh, big shout out to our sponsor, Steel Series, for providing a whole bunch of people with gear um, and more people to get gear. I have a big shout out to. Uh, I mean, I think we do again Major League Gaming. I mean, I think it's awesome. Really, thank you to all the fans, um, the community. <laughs> Uh, for those of you that don't know this week, uh, I really blew up our console community. It was time for us to make some changes and uh, really mirror directly what's going on in the greater picture of esports. Um, you know, we had let, left sort of a Gears of War division, a Halo division, a Call of Duty division. We blew all those divisions up. We combined them into one community gamer division. Um, if any of those games should ever end up on a pro circuit again or somewhere where we want to build a long-term relationship with those games again, we will. But otherwise, we're absorbing that into our community gamer section. Um, you know, competitive gaming's changing. Our focus is a lot more on the PC now, uh, and that's just a reality of what is happening with developers and publishers. Um, so, again... Uh, a lot of times there are some of you who want us to run events. We will, we will gladly run events. We will gladly sponsor events if you bring us the people who we believe uh, are worthy of running that event. Because I, Jerry Prohaska, am not going to run an event. But if I invest in it and it's got VV's brand on it, I certainly have to make sure it meets our quality standards. So, you know, to those of us, to those of you in the community who are like, why am I just a community gamer again? Uh, we aligned our community directly with what goes on at major events from IEM to MLG to, uh, you know, IPL. So I think it's important that the community understand that. It's really important that those of you that don't get it um, get why we do it. And, look, if you don't like it, sadly, a resignation will be accepted, right? I'm just being honest with you. Uh, we have to spend limited resources and, more importantly, limited time of our staff on the games that uh, have the biggest audiences and allow us the biggest opportunities for growth. And sadly, if they're not on a major circuit, those opportunities are extremely limited. So just wanted to share that with the community, something that you can point to when somebody has a question. Uh, Just like Adam said, we went around and played devil's advocate on staff with how various members of our community we feel as we eliminated the Rhythm Gaming Division, eliminated... Uh, a lot of the ones that don't have that doesn't mean we don't still have players. And at least we just got rid of the structure around those divisions, got rid of the managers for those divisions as there's nothing to manage and really uh, focus our time and effort elsewhere. If you want to, if our community Halo members want to play Halo or Gears, that's fine. But we have to put our attention around the titles that are aligned with what's going on in esports and also provide us with the opportunity to grow the community and bring in more great people. So that's my final thing for tonight. Most definitely. Uh, Kurt just mentioned something. I think that that is a very good call-out, Kurt. Um, executives tomorrow, shout-out to them, Jason Lake. They're going to have the Twitch TV uh, COO, Kevin Lynn, I believe his name is, on the show. Um, so definitely talk about... Um, Definitely tune in. We are going to try to talk to Jason Lake, see if we can get him over on the show, talk about the executives, what they're doing, complexity, things of that nature here in the future. Uh, So look for that in an upcoming episode of the Losers Bracket. Uh, Shout out to, even though we did blow up the Halo and console division, shout out to the Halo fans that do continue to tune in. Big news today with uh, Halo 4 being shown on Conan O'Brien tonight, as well as the release date of November 6th set. So, uh... Hey guys, please don't uh, continue. To, do, don't be negative. Continue to stay positive. There is hope on the horizon. You know, we we'd like to see the game back in a really big way as well. So we have our fingers crossed. Uh, no control. You just mentioned you have one more thing. What's going on, buddy? Yeah, uh, one more thing. Uh, all of our all of our players and all streams. Um, 
they're all League of Legends streams, rather. Uh, Skilly's the one who's most popular right now, but they do all have streams, and uh, you guys should all go take a look. They're all featured on solomid.net, um, and you can watch me carry Roshan in 2K ELO. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> all right, I think that just about wraps it up. Uh, my last shout out, Jerry, is to you. Thank you so much for letting me stay at your place over the weekend while I was up in Chicago. It was great getting to see you again twice in one month. I think that's pretty damn awesome. Thank you, sir, for opening your home to me. You are a uh, kind and gentle soul, no matter what anybody says, even if you don't. don't gentle, the uh, don't tell people that. Don't, don't, don't start it. wanting to come the fuck over. I was slightly. <laughs> I, Medusa, Talon, uh, Foxy Moxie, there were way too many gamers at my house in one weekend. <laughs> saying nice things about me. That is not going to fly. Okay, right? I'll so, shut up. That's it. Fuck Halo. There. That'll get some oh, fucking hate. Shut up, Halo. Spike. Fuck all you motherfuckers and you're whining about your fucking game. I hope it doesn't <laughs> end up on the circuit for the rest of the year. Go fucking kill yourself. Why don't you whole fucking Halo division resign in mass? Kill your fucking self. See? Now I feel better about myself. Thank Don't you rant for- my ass, you liar. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're out of here, guys. Thank you so much for staying all the way till the end. Shout-outs to those people in the stream. We got Frag Raptor, Bear Medusa, ABC Infinite, uh, VV Roshan now, Tilter, Buzz. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We had an awesome show. Thank you to Adam again, and we'll be back next week, same time as always. It will be uh, 9 p.m. Eastern on the VV Gaming Twitch TV channel. Shoutouts to our sponsors, Control Freak, Steel Series, Gamer Grub. You guys are awesome. Shoutout to Power Glove for giving us the music you hear on the show. If you have any feedback, paradise at vv-gaming.com or our Twitters right down here at the bottom of the screen. You've seen them all episode. Um, you are special, no control. What the hell is your problem? All right, guys, have a great week. We'll see you back here next Tuesday night. Have a great weekend. Enjoy some gaming. Enjoy the next arena this weekend. Make sure to buy your pass. VVV2012 is the referral code. Until next week, take care, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.